to the um, August 27th Planning Board meeting. Um, we'll call, uh, have a call to order. Yeah. Okay. Mr. DePerry? Here. Ms. Hendrickson? Here. Ms. Saunders? Here. Mr. Bealey? Here. Um, in the absence of um, Corey Fellows and Nick McGee and Sue Oakless, um, three members missing, we're going to have um, Ms. Uh, Hendrickson and... I'm a regular member. Oh, you're... Mm -hmm. It's just Mr. DePerry. Oh, Mr. DePerry, okay. As a, um, as a voting member this evening. Um, now we'll have uh, pleasure. Please join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Um, now we have um, three sets of minutes, and uh, we have we're going to have to vote on them separately. The June twenty fifth uh, minutes, Robin was not here. Correct. So does anybody have any um, any questions pertaining to those minutes? No. No problem. Okay. Have a motion to. So moved. Okay. Second. Okay. Second. Mm -hmm. All those in favor? Okay. Um, the um, July 16th, Rick wasn't here. So do I have a motion on uh, any discussion on that? Um, uh, sorry, go ahead. I, I have a, on page 7 of 8, um, when you noted that I appreciated the architecture of the buildings, that was specifically the duplexes. Mm -hmm. Okay. I also have several um, revisions. Uh, one on page four regarding um, vetting of the public benefit for the pedestrian connection for Piper Shores. One also on page seven of eight regarding um, the crossroads, uh, that more information about existing conditions in the site inventory of natural resources. Um, uh, was re was requested and then lastly on page eight again the same thing for the second crossroads um, that uh, updates on existing wildlife and natural resource inventory on the site was requested and I'll hand these down to thank you okay is there a motion <coughs> move to approve the uh, minutes as amended uh, second okay all those in favor okay four and finally, August 6th, and everybody was here. <laughs> Sorry, I actually didn't receive them, and I did not download them, so hmm. you may... Actually, I don't have them. Yeah. They came via email. Oh, did they? Yeah. yeah. And so I we'll we'll over next over time. that. Okay. okay, we'll do those next time. All right. Now, the um, first item on the agenda is Sean and Stein Realty. Uh, as uh, doing business as Portland Volvo requests a site plan amendment review for 9 U.S. Route 1 assessors map <coughs> U50 lot 18. Jamal. All right. Uh, the applicant's proposing a site plan amendment to demolish the existing building on the site, replace it with a new 23,850 foot square foot automobile sales repair and service facility. After a thorough review process, the board moved this to a consent item for tonight's agenda. Uh, staff has minimal comments that have been incorporated into the draft motion as conditions of approval. That's all I have. Okay. Um, is the um, applicant here? Do you have anything you want to offer? No? Okay. Um, before I go any further, I should mention that um, we don't take up, up any new business after 1030 at night. So, just want everybody to be aware of that. And also, if you do, they have agenda. Do they have these agendas out there. The agendas are right in the chair next to the. Okay, so um, there's a number of agenda items that do allow for public comment. So I just want people to be aware of that. Um, so um, let's see. Do you um, any comments from the from the board? Robin, you have anything? 
We're all set? Okay. Uh, so can I have a motion? Um, would you like to read it? Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Um, okay, I move to approve the project uh, titled Portland Volvo proposed by Sun and, Sh Sun and Sh is it Shine? Okay, Realty LFC as depicted on the plan set prepared by Sebago Technics dated 8718 with the following findings, waiver, and conditions. Um, and should I just, should I read everything? Or? Mm -hmm. Everything. Okay, the findings. The, the applicant is proposing to demolish the existing building on the site and replace it with a new 23,850 square foot motor vehicle automobile sales repair and service facility. The property is located within the business office research district and is identified on the town of Scarborough tax maps as map U50 lot 18A. <clears throat> The planning board has received the application and supporting documentation and find that finds that the proposed design of the plan, site plan adequately addresses the site plan review and zoning ordinance requirements for site utilization and layout. Access internal vehicle, uh, vehicular movement, parking, pedestrian ways, landscaping, stormwater management, lighting architecture, utilities, and storage. And there are four waivers. The first one is a permit for parking our wits as depicted on the plan set dated 8718. The second one is a permit for proposed parking lot without a network of internal walkways as depicted on the plan set dated 8718. And number three is permit, permit the request to not provide a pedestrian walkway from the existing sidewalk along Route 1 to the proposed building. And and waiver number four is permit the design of the proposed building as depicted on the uh, plan set dated 8718. The conditions are prior to the is issuance of a building permit, the plan set shall be revised to include A, a plan notation related to the proposed timing of the parking lot light fixtures, and B, the addition of a construction phasing plan, including the plan for the demo uh, demolition of the existing building and the plan for the construction of the new building, including uh, material storage areas. These revisions shall be reviewed and approved by the planning department. <clears throat> Condition number two is prior to the issuance of a building permit, the sewer impact fee shall be paid to the city of South Portland. And three, prior to the start of the construction, a pre-construction meeting is required. The meeting shall include appropriate town staff, the developer, and their, their site contractor and is to be coordinated through the planning department. Second. Okay. Any further questions? All those in favor? Okay. Okay. Um, the next item on the agenda, item number six, has with, been withdrawn. Item number um, seven is Sarah and Ben St. Clair request a shoreline zoning review of 43 Tapley Road, <coughs> Assessor's Map R1, Lot 3. Ready? I'm ready. All right. So this project's located in the RF and Stream Protection Overlay District. Um, so in accordance with the town's shoreland zoning ordinance, the applicant is in front of the board for review of a new stream crossing. The applicant is proposing to construct a new driveway extending across Silver Brook via the installation of a culvert to provide access to upland areas on the property. Section 15C of the shoreland zoning ordinance provides land use standards for the board to review this application. Uh, just a few comments. Staff suggests that the plan view should highlight the embedment of the culvert and note the invert and necessary grading for the project. Additionally, the town's peer reviewer has suggested that the applicant provide proposed grading on the plan to ensure that it will not result in additional impacts to the wetlands on the site. And staff suggests that the applicant provide the board with an update on the status of their main DEP permit by rule application. That's all I have. Applicant. 
Thank you. Okay. Out we can. Good evening, Craig Burtis with Sebago Technics. The proposed culvert is needed for access to upland areas on the parcel. Ultimately, it will serve a single, new single family residence. The culvert will meet all the latest standards from a local standpoint, state, and federal. On August 14th, we submitted a main DEP PBR. So technically, it's 14 days beyond when that was submitted. So we technically have approval, but I'll get that in writing from the state. At about the same time we submitted the town permit application, we also submitted to Army Corps. I've worked with Army Corps to address all their comments, so I believe we're good there. However, we still have a time period that we have to wait for the BAT consultation, and we expect approval on that within the next two weeks. Last week, last Thursday, we received the town staff and peer review comments, which were all relatively minor in nature, and tonight we're seeking approval with a condition of approval that we're going to address those comments to the town staff satisfaction. That's about all I have. Are there any questions? Um, this is one of those items that is uh, open to public comment if anybody has anything they'd like to um, express. You're the only ones here? Okay. Um, and the board, um, Rachel? I have, no, I have no questions. I looked it over, it's fine to me. I think? I said I looked it over and it looks fine. Oh, okay. Yeah, I just had a couple questions. Um, with, uh, with respect to the um, suitability of soils, I know that you looked at them uh, in accordance with NRCS. Do you, did you get, or do you feel that geotechnical analysis is needed as all, at all for this? We had our soil survey uh, evaluate the soils in the oh. upland areas for septic suitability and that's how the driveway was uh, the driveway location was chosen but as far as where the culvert crosses we have not performed anything beyond that okay I'm just wondering as far as engineering characteristics if they need to be analyzed at all um, uh, or actually I should ask staff if that's what's meant if, if suitability of soils is meant only as um, highly erodible or engineering analysis like bearing capacity would, would um, come into play as far as this sort of overpass structure. And it's, it was hard for me to understand what the purpose, well, well, could you elaborate on what the purpose of the crossing is for? The crossing is to provide access to the upland areas on the parcel. For pedestrian vehicles? For vehicles. For vehicles. It's just a, it's just a driveway. Mm -hmm. And uh, Really kind of going, looking at the soils from a geotechnical standpoint for a project like this is beyond the level of, of care. The plans that we submitted are typical of a project like this. And uh, Where? We're, we're not providing. In other towns? Uh, just from, from our standpoint, from what we typically produce for a, a plan set like this. You know, uh, geotechnical evaluation might be needed if we had some t footings, if we were um, proposing a uh -huh. open-ended culvert, okay. open bottom culvert, but for a closed bottom culvert, this is within the standard of care. Okay. Um, talk to me about, you said you have a, a NERPA permit coming? We, we submitted a NRPA PBR, yep. and we submitted that on August 14th. And the way that works is if you don't hear anything back within 14 days after it was submitted, you mm -hmm. have approval. Yep. So I'll reach out to DEP and try to get some paperwork to confirm that. And Army Corps, did you have to get any Army Corps permits? Yes, we submitted a Category 2 mm -hmm. permit through Army Corps. Mm -hmm. And we worked to address their comments. And now we're just waiting on the BAT consultation period. Because when you, just, when you clear at least one tree, you have to go through that, the BAT consultation. So are you proposing any in-water work? Yeah, there's going to there's gonna be a coffer dam set up for bypass pumping. That would be another reason that you would need to get Army Corps 
They by and correct, not yes. just for bats? Yes. Okay. Um, and what's the status of your Army Corps permit? It's, we're just waiting for the bat consultation. And the, from when we submitted to, uh, they said they can get us approval no later than mid-September. Okay. I guess um, due to the, to the sensitive nature of this project, I would be inclined to ask that there be an, um, well, let me ask you this. Um, who are you, do you have any idea who the contractor will be? Yes. Uh, our, yes, the client does have a contractor chosen. Is uh, the contractor certified? Certified. Cer yes. For what? You're working in a shoreland zone, so your contractor needs to be certified by the DEP's NPS program. And so I, I feel like there we're, we're missing a little bit of okay. information if, here. If that's, is that a requirement yes, from a state standpoint? Sure. Then, yep, then the contractor will we'll make sure that the contractor meets those requirements. Okay. And so because of the sensitive nature of this, I'm, I'm really not trying to be a hard ass, but I just feel like things have, not every stone has been un, uh, turned overturned here. Um, so I would suggest, not sure that DEP will require it, that there be a qualified on-site inspector um, while this is done um, to make sure that we are, we are working appropriately because we are doing in-stream work and it seems like we're not quite informed about the need for a certified shoreland zoning contractor. And um, yeah, okay. I guess that's it. We'll, we'll make sure that the contractor meets all the local and state requirements. Um, maybe I can help sure, a little Angela. bit. Um, we, we're talking as staff, too, about having a pre-construction meeting for this. So we would be meeting and sitting down with the, the okay. site contractor and going over. Um, part of the concern was a lot of times um, the details show the embedment and things like that. And then on the plan view, you get a, a, a contractor that's not used to right. dealing with um, a stream crossing like this. and so things gets missed, and so it was really important, I think, for staff to kind of chime in with wanting to sit down with them and kind of go over the plans, and we can go over that. <coughs> Craig uh, would be invited to that as well and um, have the certified contractors there. So the town would have to um, sign off on that anyway for if, if we make that a condition. Of, I don't know if that's in the conditions or not. It is. Okay. Okay, so our conditions that we're looking at right now include... I think that we need to have a contractor that's, you know, it's a state requirement, but it's worth noting that they be um, certified by DEP's NPS program. Um, I would request, and only if it, you know, if my other board members agree that there be a, a, a third party inspection due to the environmentally sensitive nature. Go ahead, yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know about, as long as the contractor's certified and staff is comfortable. Okay. You know, if it was a Portland vault, if it was a, a res, you know, if it wasn't a residence, then I'd be inclined to say yes and agree with you. But it's a driveway to a single family home on a farm. Mm -hmm. So you know, it's a, it just seems like if the contractor was certified and Angela's comfortable um, at the pre-construction meeting, I think it would, I would be inclined to say where it's a residence. And it's, I understand it's a, it is a stream. But I just hate to see people have a hard time trying to build a house if, if we can make them meet the requirements but not go over and above the requirements, if that makes sense. Um, I don't think I'm asking anybody to go above. Have stream smart um, practices been applied here? Yes. In what way? Uh, we went out and took six measurements of the stream mm -hmm. and we sized the culvert based on 1.2 times the bank full width in addition to evaluating the entire 40-acre watershed. Mm -hmm. And what type of culvert is it that you're using? It's, it's not? It's a 60-inch corrugated metal pipe. Okay, so it's not open bottom? No. Okay. Okay. Rachel, do you have anything? Um, I would just like to... Uh, actually suggest that we add the language in the draft motion that we're looking at that includes the requirement for a certified contractor. I have uh, no opinion on a third party inspector. Angela, do you want to weigh in anymore? Or do you feel comfortable 
with is it, has this been a condition? Um, what for the certified contractor? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we would require it anyway. Yeah, okay. So it's yeah. Yeah, it's required by the state. It's a that's a requirement by the state. Requirement by the state, like Robin sure, yeah. pointed out. So that really doesn't. It, it, it's probably a good idea to put it in. Can't hurt, right? Can't hurt. Okay. Does that mean DEP certified? Mm -hmm. DEP's NPS program. Are, are you all set with that? Uh, I guess so. Yeah. Okay. All right. I I have a draft motion. I'll read this while you're adding that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um. I move to approve the steam, uh, stream crossing project proposed by Ben and Sarah St. Clair on the property at 43 Tapley Road with the following findings and conditions. <clears throat> findings. The property is located within the Rural Farming District and the Stream Protection Overlay District and is identified on the Town of Scarborough tax map as Map 1, Lot 2. The Planning Board has reviewed the application and supporting documentation of fines that the proposed design adequately addresses the shoreline shoreland zoning requirements. The conditions are, uh, condition number one, uh, prior to installation, the plan set shall be revised to address the comments in the staff memo dated August 27th, 2018. These shall be reviewed and approved by the planning department. And number two is prior to installation, the applicant shall address the comments of the in wooden, wooden, uh, wooded and currents peer review memo dated 8-23-18. These shall be reviewed and approved by the planning department. And three, the applicant shall use the uh, main DEP NPS certified contractor for the project. This shall be reflected on the plan set with the plan notation. Uh, this condition <laughs> <laughs> shall be um, reflected on the plan set with the plan notation. And number four, did I read prior to construction? Mm -hmm. Did I read that already? No. Okay, prior to the uh, construction, to the start of construction, a pre-construction meeting is required. The meeting shall include appropriate town staff, the developer, and the site contractor, and is to be coordinated through the planning department. A second? Second. Any further comment? All set. Those in favor? <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Okay, uh, next item on the agenda is E and F Limited Liability Company request a preliminary site plan amendment review for 371 U.S. Route 1, Assessor's Map, U39, Lot 4709. Well. All right, so as the board may recall, this is located in a contract zone in the B3 and now the Highgus Parkway zone at 371 U.S. Route 1. Uh, the applicant is proposing to amend the contract zone to include uh, an additional lot, uh, U39, lot 44709, to enable the addition of 88 parking spaces to be used for new vehicle inventory. Uh, th this applicant was before the board at the last meeting. Um, in accordance with the zoning ordinance, the applicant is in front of the board for a preliminary provisional site plan review subject to the enactment of the requested amendment to the contract zoning agreement by town council. Uh, this is also uh, an opportunity for the board to provide suggestions uh, to the contract zoning language prior to the uh, review by the, of the requested amendment by the town council. As encouraged by the board at the last meeting, the applicant has reduced the size of the proposed parking lot to 27,878 square feet. And staff has met with the designer uh, since the last board meeting to discuss the proposed design. And there are some remaining uh, concerns that Angela will now discuss. Um, when we met with um, the designer, um, one of the things we talked about was reducing the total disturbed area. I know we talked about that with the impervious area, but there's also some grading, and they were in agreement about tightening that up. So there's some, the footprint, I think, still can use some work, and they've agreed with that um, and said they would tighten up some of that grading. 
Ms. Lopes, so maybe they could address that. Um, we also <coughs> talked about um, this now triggering because of the accumulated effect. This triggers our Chapter 419, which means um, we need to get, enter into a, a maintenance agreement and have the annual reporting to the town, which is typical on a site as it reaches this type of threshold with disturbed area. Um, we also talked about the um, location of where the stormwater facility actually discharges, which is actually located within the 100-foot buffer. And so we talked about actually moving that. There's, there's other places that they could discharge to, and they were working on that. Um, and the last thing that might be something that the board wants to discuss is um, the conservation, um, I guess, easement or buffer that they were referring to. You can tell it's, it's a straight linear um, area rather than a true offset of Willowdale Brook, which is on our threatened list. And so what we talked about was actually extending it um, maybe further into, because they didn't want to do a true 100 foot offset because it impacts their proposed parking. Um, there is some room to, to maybe utilize some of the area um, that the parking isn't on the existing portion of the site and that they aren't developing in that we could protect. And so it becomes more of a fluid area, I think, for, um, to, to preserve, I guess, that buffer to Willowdale um, if we can't get that true 100-foot setback. That's all I have. And Angela, you mean a 100-foot offset from the stream? Yes. Okay. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Okay, is the uh, applicant? Mr. Chairman and members of the board, uh, it's always good to be back in Scarborough and Long Conway, Sebago Technics. Um, and we, um, we were here uh, the last uh, meeting and we requested your approval and we had some things that we needed to work on, which we've been doing so. So uh, as Jamel um, stated in his introduction, uh, we've narrowed the aisle widths of the parking area here, 23 feet, to reduce the affirmative footprint. And um, so we're requesting a waiver uh, to allow us to do that. And to Angela's comments, um, we will, we've got a little bit of work to do to, as in her words, tighten up the grading on the edges of the property uh, to bring a tree save a little bit closer in. Uh, to the uh, parking area, so we will be doing that. Uh, we confirmed today that we will have an outfall for the detention pond that's not within a 100-foot buffer, so we think we're in good shape there. Um, and then the last item um, that Angela mentioned was increasing the buffer. And um, so I spoke to my client. And so what we are going to propose uh, when you see the final plan, <clears throat> is to expand it uh, to provide a minimum 50-foot offset from the brook. So the diagram is yellow is as we originally proposed it, and green are additional areas here where the stream comes closer to the buffer. We'll, we'll uh, offset the stream by 50 feet undisturbed buffer here and in this location as well. And with those changes, um, we are asking for your preliminary approval this evening so that we can move on with the council and then come back for final. Okay. Um, Rick, you want to? Sure, I'll start. I don't, you know, I had some concerns last time they were here, but um, based on Angela's comments and, and what I've seen in the documentation they presented, it looks like they've addressed most of those comments or are in the process of working with Angela to address those. So, um, you know, I feel, I sense that Angela's comfortable, which makes me comfortable. So, um, from what I've seen, if they can, as this is this preliminary, right? We're for approval, we're not doing, yeah. I'm comfortable with preliminary approval. I'd like to, um, yeah, I'm good. Rachel? 
Yeah, I'm comfortable as well with the preliminary approval, uh, given Angela's comments. Um, I still have a bit of a question about the existing shed, uh, and we haven't actually seen any sort of drawings. We've simply heard of the mythical shed that's been moved <laughs> around the property. Uh, and um, in the design standards, there is a reference to a requirement that a, a something like a shed at least bear some resemblance to the architecture of the building. Uh, and as you're changing the architecture of the building, I don't necessarily propose that you uh, make a mini, mini building, um, mini shed out of the the shed. But uh, it it still, in in my mind, remains uh, this sort of a question mark of what that's doing. What does it look like? What purpose does it serve? Okay, we'll bring that to you at final. Thank you. Can I just make sure. a clarification yeah. first? Yeah. Um, this is the. I just want to make it. Known, I guess this is the first I've seen their proposal for that conservation buffer. So I just want to make sure you guys are chiming in with your opinions, okay. because that's what will go to council, um, and and that's fine. Whatever you guys decide. I just I didn't want you guys to think that this was what okay. we had sat down and talked about. But I mean, uh, it's heading in the direction we were talking about. So okay, based I'm, on that, I'm good with that. But it, it it definitely is could be a <laughs> conversation with council. So you want, you whatever. <laughs> I wish Robin went first on this one. Um, <laughs> I'd like to know where that, where the outlets, if you haven't reviewed where the outlet's going to come out for the stormwater, I'd like to definitely see that and see, because uh, I'd like to see where it was originally. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, I do know, actually, I know where it was originally. Um, yeah, so originally. But what are you proposing here. to do with it? That's what I'm guessing. We're proposing to uh, discharge here. Okay. Outside of the Okay. Outside of the green as well? Outside of the green as well. Okay. Um, what's the slope there? What's it, you don't have a topograph. We don't have a tope map, do we? I mean, how, is it a pretty aggressive slope to the stream, or is it fairly? Uh, it varies, but it is steep in some locations. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it's still, for preliminary, I'm still fine with it, but I, you know, we definitely, it sounds like we still have some things to iron out between now and final approval. Yeah. Okay. I'm good. Sorry. Thank okay. you. Okay. Robin? Yeah, can I have staff just explain to me the 100-foot buffer? Is it from the center line of the stream? Is it from the edge of the stream in each direction? Could, can I just get some clarification about the 100-foot buffer? Well, it wasn't a requirement. It was something they were proposing. So I guess that would be a, a question. It, it appeared to me as 100 foot from the property line. Is that? That's correct. OK, 100 foot from the property line. And that is, and the purpose of the buffer is? Well, again, as Angela stated, it's not required. This is a good faith effort from the applicant to preserve that area. OK. Um, and to sort of meet additional requirements because you're in Willowdale Brook, which is threatened, impaired? No, it's not. <clears throat> Again, this buffer is not required. Okay. Is it vegetated? Yes. Okay. Forested. Forested. Okay. Um, what is the normal setback for, for um, this stream? I believe it would be 25. Well, you have to go through permitting. Yeah, so 20, it, 25 is right. You would start with a stream with Inland Fisheries and Wildlife looking at 75, but then you can permit to 25, correct? Yeah. Okay. I think there's a permit by rule for anything within, within 100, right? Right. Yeah. So, um, and there's no construction within 100 feet of that stream, right? Correct. Okay. There's just disturbance, but there's no construction. Yeah. Was the buffer part of the original stormwater management for no. the site? Okay. No, it's not. A, it's not a stormwater DMP. Okay. How will the conservation easement be memorialized? Uh, that's up to you, folks. I imagine when you do whatever you do to the council, you're going to ask them to include that in the language because yeah. currently it's not. Yeah. So I guess that that would be my recommendation to the council is that we memorialize this wooded buffer 
um, because wooded buffer. I'd, I'd like it added as wooded buffer because it is it is an extremely powerful tool for mitigating um, the thermal impacts, the the Im impervious area impacts for the site, and it tr it provides a tremendous public benefit, which is what contract zoning is all about. Yeah. And so that is, I guess, I would like to have it included in our recommendation to town council that that buffer be memorialized as is, and we appreciate you extending it to 50 feet and 100 feet where possible, Will. Yeah. Okay. Um, I would also ask that, um, talk to me about, um, now that we've triggered sort of chapter 419, which requires post-construction inspection, Will, who will be doing that? Will it be Sebago Technics? Will it be the landowner? Who will be actually executing those inspections and submitting the reports to the town? Well, I defer to Angela. Sebago would do it unless that agreement requires a third party inspector. I don't know if it does or not. Um, it would, yeah, it would be up to the, the applicant to hire someone. So which Sebago would be qualified to do that? Yeah, we have certified, you know, DEP certified. Inspectors. So that's another condition that I'd like to put in there that we actually have an executed contract to make sure that 419 is in progress and in place. Unless sure. there's an existing contract with um, a similar qualified inspector already. For example, if the landowner is already contracting with someone to make sure that those post-construction inspections are done, that will suffice. Just, you know, submit that to demonstrate that that requirement is being met. Yeah. Otherwise, my, my recommendation that the planning board consider to the town council is that we require that a new one be done so that we know exactly who is going to come out and do those inspections and make sure the buffer is in place and that the, you know, the discharge is functioning appropriately at least 100 feet from the setback kind of a thing, Will. So, sure. And, it would, you know, it would be great if it were Spago Technics, but like I say, if the landowner already has someone on the books to do it, that's fine too. Um, can you talk to me about the waiver that you're requesting? That you the said aisle you width. So your ordinance requires a 25-foot aisle. And you, and you would decrease that to 24, correct? To 23. 23, perfect. Um, so, yep. and we did that as the board encouraged us to, but technically that triggers a, a way. And the police and fire are fine with that? Yes. Okay, so they've signed off on that. Angela, did you have any issues with the decreased dial? Jamel, did you have any? Okay. I guess that's, that's all I have left. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. I have a um, draft motion. One um, second. Okay. Um, so before the board can uh, r provide recommendations to the council, mm -hmm. it has to be a sort of a board's blessing, um, not an individual's blessing. So I think it'd be wise for the board to sort of raise hands on Robin's suggestions um, for recommendations to the council, just so it's in the record. I agree. I agree. I agree. So okay. we just need to, do I mean, I listened to everything she said, but can we write it in the, do you want to write it on the on the uh, draft so that we have it, so that we're clear? I think um, it will be reflected in the minutes. Mm -hmm. So okay. that we're memorializing the, the buffer somehow, and then to having an execution of post-construction inspection. Right. Okay. So that doesn't need to go... We can just keep that track of that in the minutes. We don't need to keep track of the minutes. Okay. Well, does this run, do the minutes run with the land, or does this, the condition of approval, run with the land? Well, it's a preliminary approval. Okay. So it's essentially a way to grant approval to the next step. Okay. Um, so they'll be back okay. um, for okay. a final approval. Okay. Got it. All right. So we agree with, with the Robin's comments, and they'll be documented in... Uh, in the process as we move forward. Okay. All well set? Thank you. So um, I'll read the, uh, the draft motion for the preliminary provisional site plan. I move to grant preliminary provisional site plan approval for the project titled Land Rover Jaguar proposed by E and F Limited Liability Company as depicted on the plan set prepared by Sebago Technics dated 8-13-18 with the following conditions. Uh, actually, just one condition. Um, D 
the ap applicant shall address the staff comments in a, in a memo in the memo dated 8 27 2018 these revisions shall be incorporated into the final site plan submission to the planning board so moved i mean second <laughs> i'll second second we got two seconds all right you want to second it too yeah i second it as well i'll well, second it <laughs> all those in favor okay thank you uh jamel procedural question so right. it's on my calendar tomorrow to write a letter to Cody mm -hmm. to say that we'd like to be placed on the council agenda. Is that appropriate? Is that the right next step for me? He can. As long as Tony's comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> and I would have to, before I send that, to amend the language to include these two okay. items about the buffer and the 419. And they'll, the minutes will be done to reflect that for the council. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, next agenda, agenda uh, item, item number nine is M&R Holdings, LLC request a preliminary subdivision and site plan review for lot one of the Crossroads Plan Development District, phase one, assesses map R52, lot four, and this is the one that's entitled the Carriage Walk Apartments. Okay. Jamal. All right. As you said, Mr. Chair, the applicants in front of the board were the preliminary subdivision plan and site plan for a lot one of the phase one plan development at the Scarborough Downs. Uh, the applicants are proposing to build four 12 unit apartment buildings on this lot. Uh, by way of background, the applicant did receive preliminary subdivision approval for the entire phase one plan development in June. Uh, for a variety of reasons, the applicant has decided to move forward with separate subdivision applications. Uh, for this lot and then, then the next agenda item, lot two, uh, within the plan development. So with this submission, the applicant is seeking preliminary subdivision approval for lot one in the phase one plan development. Uh, staff has provided several housekeeping comments on the plans in regards to the preliminary subdivision plan. Uh, the applicant should be sure to incorporate these suggestions into their final sub subdivision application. And the applicant has also provided the proposed site plan elements that were reviewed by the board uh, two meetings ago in July. Uh, while tonight's review will primarily focus on the preliminary subdivision elements, uh, the board may wish to provide comments on specific site plan elements if desired. That's what I have. Okay. Mr. Bacon. Thank you. Uh, good evening. Dan Bacon, Goral Palmer. I'm here with uh, Lucas Anthony. Uh, from our team, Rocky Risbera, Bill Risbera, and Peter Lavoy from uh, M&R Holdings and Risbera Brothers. Uh, Jamel, I'm sorry, I think I screwed up your monitor uh, situation, but is yours um, going? Are you? I had it plugged in, but then here, let me unplug. Okay. Um, Maybe you should replug. I'll, I'll do that. See what happens. Um, but, but to start, start primarily, as um, Mr. Torres introduced, uh, this is really more of a procedural preliminary subdivision uh, application to the board. Um, the more we're getting into the pro this project, the more unique it is, uh, um, kind of the more complex it is from a permitting standpoint. And working with um, town staff and the town attorney and our team's attorney, uh, it made sense for a variety of reasons to um, actually review lots one and two as independent, independent subdivisions because they're really subdivisions within a subdivision. And we see that being the trend for this project where we're designing a very integrated plan. Um, but from a permitting standpoint, it makes a lot of sense to have uh, subdivisions within this integrated plan because ultimately they're going to be have different ownership entities they're going to have different characters of development so the design is very integrated and inter interdependent on uh, different aspects of the project but uh, each of these lots is ultimately going to have a different ownership and therefore a different subdivision approval so this evening's uh, plan is really to 
to kind of have this subdivision process catch up to the site plan process that we started with the board um, in June and July and to have uh, a preliminary subdivision plan for each lot match the overall subdivision plan. Um, so the board I have uh, in front of me highlights those two lots. Uh, lot one, as Jamel introduced, is the lot that is proposing four 12-unit apartment buildings um, and totaling 48 units. Um, it's the lot that's uh, further up the Downs Road in this location here. Um, and it's going to be right at the corner of the new residential street and the Downs Road. Since um, our last meeting that reviewed uh, these plans, we provided the board with additional material around this, uh, around this particular lot in this particular subdivision. We've submitted a lighting plan that shows LED cutoff fixtures um, per the town's design standards and requirements. Um, we've updated the landscaping plan and um, we've also had further coordination with DEP around our stormwater approach. We actually had a meeting with Jeff Dennis uh, from the Augusta office um, to review the approach to stormwater, particularly around chloride. And um, he was very supportive of the stormwater approach um, in that it, uh, it's designed to minimize chloride impacts um, in light of uh, not having infiltration um, and not adding chloride to the groundwater. So he thought that was an important aspect to this design and, and appreciated uh, that approach. Um, beyond that, uh, we've coordinated further with the fire department. They reviewed the fire lanes, uh, fire hydrant locations are satisfied with uh, emergency response and the design of, of the project uh, in, terms of, in terms of fire. We've also updated the landscaping plan um, for some planning board comments. I guess the final piece um, that was discussed at the last planning board meeting uh, was around architecture. Uh, the board had comments on the architecture of these buildings and um, the eight unit uh, condo buildings in lot two that we'll talk about next. Um, we've looked at the commercial design standards further um, and thought a lot about the architectural approach to this phase and to the different uh, components of, of this phase and also its relationship to future phases and uh, we th think it meets the design standards. Um, the applicants likes the mixture, the, the mix of uses, excuse me, the mix of materials in terms of the clapboards. They uh, like the, the white clean approach to the design um, and actually are thinking about and we have some plans for the downtown area that actually uh, relate well to the architecture in this phase. Um, so we've, we've thought about adjustments and feel like um, the design of these 12 unit buildings is the direction the project wants to go and, and meets the commercial design standards. I'm gonna show um, on the overhead. I can get this to... I don't know if it's gonna work. Okay. So this is the building design we're proposing for the four buildings um, in lot one. Um, and it, like we presented at the last meeting, it's got the materials per the commercial design standards, um, the sort of roof line massing, the building orientation is close to the street as expected by the zone and the design standards. Uh, we did provide in your last in this latest submission, all four sides of the building to understand the different perspectives um, to both the Downs Road and to the parking area and to the adjacent buildings. Um, and if you've seen these from the presentation we had with the, the town council a few weeks ago, um, these are not phase one, but they're images of the potential 
kind of downtown area or core of the project um, that we're thinking about. And we're thinking about, in the future, the relationship of phase one and the architecture there to potential architecture here in the downtown. And you'll see in both images, well, there's a concept for, for uh, the redevelopment of the grandstands um, that we're, we're thinking about and envisioning, but also um, some other mixed-use buildings that we see fronting the town square. Um, obviously, it's different architecture, but it's a lot of the same architectural themes. We want this project to ha be integrated in terms of materials, in terms of aesthetics. Um, so you see the mixed-use buildings there that, that we think are possible um, in future phases, having that relationship to phase one. Um, in this case, it's you know, same, the same white siding, uh, board and batten, uh, black window trim. So we want phase one to relate to future phases, and we think that um, it's an it's a, uh, approach that meets the town standards um, in phase one. So with that, I'll wrap up my presentation and turn it back to the board. OK. Uh, this, this agenda item is um, open for public comment if there's anybody from the public wishes to speak. Not seeing any. Um, Robin, would you like to uh, start off? Sure. Um, I guess I was just perusing through the commercial development standards and section 20C for the crossroad plans development standards, saying that you're meeting all these standards. Um, in, in I guess what you're saying, Dan, is in reference to the, the planning board saying they were underwhelmed with the architecture, the team is saying, nope, we feel like we met the standards and this is the way it's going to stay. Or have any has anything changed since the last time you were here? On the next agenda item, we made an adjustment to unify some materials. Okay. between the eight-unit building and the duplex. So I don't want to jump ahead to your next item, but that was an area that the board asked for further consideration around those buildings. On um, these particular buildings, um, our team feels that uh, they're attractive and that they meet the commercial design standards in terms of materials, in terms of all the various requirements of, of the zoning and also the design standards. So nothing has changed since not receiving on, the comments? Not in terms not of the building architecture, no. Um, talk to me about the perp what Caltech chambers do as far as stormwater is concerned. I'm going to have uh, the Lucas Anthony, the civil engineer, answer that question. Yeah, good evening. Lucas Anthony with Goral Palmer here on uh, behalf of the applicant. The uh, cult tech chambers are part of the um, focal point system, which is a high-performance biofiltration system we've used for uh, stormwater treatment. The cult tech chambers store water and release it slowly over time. Um, what, what happens with the long-term maintenance of it? Um, is there, what I'm getting at, is there confined space issues? Do you have to go down inside them? <laughs> what, what does the maintenance look like? They have access ports at either end, which are manholes. Mm -hmm. So you can go in the manhole, visually inspect, and uh, if there is debris or sediment buildup, it can be cleaned out okay. without entering it. Without entering it, but Correct. you probably need a camera or something. To look camera and a, a back truck. Yeah. Yeah. So I just want to stress the importance of Chapter 419, um, having a, an executed post-construction inspection and maintenance. And I, I, hope, I hope you understand why because this is a fairly complex system and I understand Jeff Dennis is, has blessed it um, um, but it's only going to work as long as it's being maintained appropriately absolutely the applicant is uh, willing to do so so an executed contract to make sure that this is being done is going to be very very important um, um, so also the town knows where the reports are coming from whether, you know, it's obviously coming from the developer and then the homeowner association. 
but knowing who the actual contractor is who's looking at these to make sure that they're functioning as intended is important. So with respect to the conversation that you had with Jeff Dennis, was there any conversation about other ways to reduce chlorides from this area? Actually, it wasn't there. Dan, you might be able to talk to that. Um, we did, I mean, probably the main thing that we did is um, all our stormwater treatment systems, they're all lined. Mm -hmm. They all have a uh, polypropylene liner so that we're not introducing any um, infiltration into the groundwater. It's mm -hmm. discharged rather than uh, infiltrating. Okay. So what I'm looking for is, did you talk about chloride reduction versus not, you know, versus... Um, because I understand that sort of this, we're moving away from the low impact development that we talked about during the workshop phase. Is that correct? In what way? In what way that we're not, you know, are these, um, are we treating, are we treating stormwater quality and quantity at the source or is it going to a large collection system? Uh, no, it's being treated Good. at a number of distributed areas. Okay. Um, we have Biocells, focal points, uh, vegetated undergrains, um, really scattered throughout the site, and uh, combined with a number of different discharge locations. Um, so, with respect to the municipal capacity and state agency review, um, um, I understand that you know you talked with DEP, but can you? Can you talk about talk to us about the meetings with IFNW and Historic Preservation? Um, what are they reviewing, and what's their feedback been so far? I can jump in and look at some um, We did a site walk with IFNW, John Perry at IFNW, middle of the summer, and um, he reviewed both the main stem of Millbrook and then this. There's a small intermittent tributary. Uh, between actually just south of uh, lot one, which is the subject of this item. And he reviewed that and um, asked for, and we provided a 75 foot setback to that intermittent stream because it's, it's important, but it's not of the same uh, in terms of habitat value. It's not the same as, as Mill Brook. And he was quite pleased that we were uh, able to provide a 75 foot setback. Um, so that was his review and feedback on on habitat in the, in the two streams that are present in terms of historic, uh, main historic. Um, they identified a, um, an old grist mill um, or mill that was in the records. We did our best to go out in the field and look for it and haven't identified it along the stream. Um, and um, we've been coordinating actually with the town's historic preservation committee on that and reporting back to them on on our investigation. So, um, and it's certainly not near lot one um, and not near any proposed development. It was historically along the brook, which is gonna have a 100-foot buffer. Um, so that, that's been our recent correspondence with both those agencies. Was IFNW looking at significant habitat or critical um, species, you know, critical habitat for threatened species or anything like that? They did. Area? They reviewed all of their records, and um, the the only habitat that was identified, particularly in this area, is the um, the trout habitat along Mill Brook, and okay. that's and then they asked for the 100 foot setback. So that's. Have you assessed what? it with respect to the eastern bat and the New England cottontail and all that? They haven't identified those as issues. Um, with respect to the sequencing of work, um, have you guys given any thought to that? I'm looking at staff comments on page three. Yeah, we have. Um, we're putting together a, I wouldn't call it a phasing plan necessarily because the the intent is to, to build out um, this part of the project fairly rapidly and concurrently, um, but we're putting together a, really a construction mm -hmm. schedule, and we have a meeting scheduled with Angela and Jamal and, and Jay for right after Labor Day to one of the agenda items to walk through that. So I guess the last thing I want to ask is um, sort of one of the points I made about revising the minutes um, from July 25th. Uh, July 25th. Um, that 
you know, in our workshop, we were sort of talking about the need to, to inventory the natural resources mm -hmm. and understand what the wetlands are so far, because we, I understand this is getting assessed sort of piecemeal still as, as far as I know that you want to look at this all as, okay, let's, let's not look at it from the big picture. We're looking at just, you know, phase one of a, a, a here kind of a thing or site one. Um, but is there any work or progress that has been done on that sort of inventory? Uh, significant work has been done on inventorying, especially the wetlands, mm -hmm. on the entire site. Mm -hmm. So um, it was important to delineate the wetlands in this phase and get underway. Um, but now that we're into other parts of the site, particularly up by Payne Road, I think we reviewed that at your last meeting, mm -hmm. um, we're going way beyond that area in terms of wetland delineations and we're delineating really in a systemic way um, essentially Payne Road all the way down to Heights Parkway. So we've made a lot of progress since you brought up that point um, and have a lot to report out at the next master plan around that other part of the project. Okay and so I guess my next question would be for staff is if we were, I, I, I can't remember if it was our last meeting, we talked about maybe having a workshop to talk about you know, just the crossroads development and the status kind of a thing, I guess. Are we are we still considering that so that we could We're have the coordinating back and forth? schedules. Great. Thank you. I'm all set. Rachel. Yeah. Um, how long is this whole project, the entirety of the downs gonna take to construct? Uh, twenty years. All right, so we are in year one of, of 20 years. Uh, in 20 years, there are a lot of standards and a lot of architectural features that will change. So I'm just going to make the observation that what you think might be the town center now in five years, seven years, whenever that's built out, uh, design standards could have changed uh, and needs could have changed in terms of, of what you're projecting. Um, let me read to you. I, I looked at the design standards as well, and let me read to you the, the purposes uh, of site planning goals. Quality development that respects the uniqueness of each property and reinforces Scarborough's sense of place and character. And under the design standards, architecture that offers a positive experience from three perspectives, uh, from the motor to the pedestrian up close and in relationship to the surrounding buildings. Um, I would submit that at this point I am still underwhelmed at the quality development that respects the uniqueness of each property and reinforces Scarborough's sense of place and character in terms of the architecture there. I understand that you feel that you've met um, minimum standards. Um, I doubt very much that any advertisement for the apartments would be have as a tagline, we meet all the minimum standards. I think what we want to see is something that is more than the minimum standards. And I think the introduction to the site planning goals and the de design standards anticipate that. So I'm still looking for more from the, um, in terms of the architectural features of those four buildings. Uh, as I look at them and the landscape in relationship, I do have um, a couple of observations, and one that is that the trees appear to block out a whole row of windows. I understand that uh, that might change as you go along, but you really need to take a look at the, uh, the landscape in relationship uh, apartments frequently suffer from a lack of good uh, outdoor light. So any, any uh, landscaping that is going to start to block that really should be reconsidered. Um, when we get to the next offering that you have, uh, I did note that the architectural changes were made on the duplexes, and I think that went a long way uh, to creating some uniqueness there. Um, but I urge you to create that uniqueness here with these apartments. Thank you. Rick. I just have a couple things. Um, 
I think uh, Robin covered stormwater pretty well, and you did a good job. And I noticed in the notes it meets all the DEP requirements and everything. I'm just curious myself. Uh, that area is fairly flat. Can you put that one up there and kind of show me where everything kind of runs to, just for my own peace of mind? So, uh, generally speaking, the um, stormwater flows in this direction, and it gets collected in a uh, in a system here, and then stored temporarily, and okay. then discharged this way towards the uh, okay. intermittent stream that connects to the. Kind of, that's kind of the natural flow now. It is, yeah. Okay, and all those treatments in that area over there. It's in this area. And okay. There's a little bit. There's a little bit in this area too. Okay. But it all flows naturally. There's no pumps or anything like that. No, it's all just okay. All gravity. Okay. Yeah, just when you drive by, it just looks pretty flat. So it's uh, okay. It is pretty flat. <laughs> That's a good thing, probably, right? Um, and then, can you? I know we talked about parking a couple of times, and, and mm -hmm. pervious area is always a big deal and all that. But I kind of like. I'm in favor of having enough parking for everybody that lives there. Is there, how many, is it one and a half spaces per, what, what, how many, what's the ratio of parking to units? Uh, we, we meet the parking requirements for um, certainly the, the 12 unit buildings and then the, um, the parking open. spaces that are planned along the residential street that go by the units are intentionally um, shared overflow parking for both to be shared between the apartments in the single family neighborhood. One of the board's comments earlier on was, you know, what if uh, residents have parties or guests, et cetera, and the, the narrower streets, which are good for uh, reducing pavement and runoff, um, aren't great for on-street parking unless there's delineated spaces. So those spaces are intended to, to really kind of provide that overflow um, or extra parking uh, okay. utility for the for this lot. So in this particular development, I'm not exactly sure what the rules are anymore in Scarborough. I thought there was like no overnight parking on any street in Scarborough. Is that true? I should probably know that, right? Really in the winter, I think. That's true. But so those in this particular development, they, they can park there overnight in those spaces? Those are for guests, so they aren't okay. for residents, so they wouldn't typically park overnight. Oh, they wouldn't? Right. Those are for I see what you're saying. Okay, so that's for visitors and stuff around the building. Right, visitors. And yeah. then the rest of the parking is for everybody. And there's plenty of parking. Yeah. It looks like there's plenty of parking. I'm just curious. You all set? A little sidebar <laughs> going there, Rocky. No <laughs> whistle. So, Rocky's reminding me that the, the parking spaces that are along the Downs Road yeah. um, are planned to be for residents um, and that there's, the town has entered in agreements in the past on projects yeah. that if they maintain them in terms of snow removal, um, then they can, be they can be used overnight and dedicated for, for the apartments or for the dwelling. Yeah, I was kind of... Were you were there, were there actually the parking spaces off, not necessarily on the road parking? I would hope that that I was kind of hoping that would be the case. That if someone parked there, they wouldn't get a ticket. But right. I, know if that was the case. I was thinking of the ones on the on the side street, but the Downs Road. That is the plan: is that those parking okay. spaces, because they're on, they have an immediate entrance to the to the apartment buildings. Okay. And then um, I guess. My last comment, I don't know if we talked about, um, I thought we had mentioned somewhere along the way uh, bicycle racks. Uh, yeah, I mean, and we've added, since your last somewhere. meeting, we added bicycle racks um, both okay. on this lot and then the next item on your agenda. Oh, good job, yeah. excellent. Oh, and then one last thing I thought of while I was looking at the pretty picture. And uh, you did a great, you guys did a great job with your uh, submittals, you really do. Um, you got a submittal here for the trash can. I thought it was exquisite. Um, never seen that before. That's, That's, nice. That's a nice looking trash can, Rocky. Um, I noticed there's no recycle can though. It seems like this this would this development, right? Doesn't it this is like the twenty twenty future. 
This is the future of Scarborough. Shouldn't we have a recycle can out there? We'll get that figured out before final. <laughs> <laughs> Put it right next to the bike rack. <laughs> That's all I have. I think it looks by, I just want to make a comment that um, the submittals that you guys turn in are um, some of the nicest that I've seen. So, thank you. I was studying the lighting plan, but I can't find any flaws in it. I really wanted to, too. <laughs> are you all done? Yeah, that's all. <laughs> um, I, I I do agree with Rick too. I think the uh, your your packages uh, really put together well. Um, I, I do have a couple of comments though. Um, I, I think you're getting the sense from the board about the architecture, um, and I've driven over through your um, Carrier Woods project that you've just completed, and I think the apartment buildings over there look nice. You just have a few accent colors and then you have some, some trim work right above between the first floor and the second floor, which I think adds quite a, you know, it's a little thing, but it adds quite a bit because you've got these trees here and uh, that hides a lot of the, you know, after a while it may be okay, but initially um, it, there's, there's too much plainness to me on, on, that, on that front there, so that's why if you could do something similar to what you have over at Carrier Woods, I think that would be, that would be better. The other thing I'm going to ask you, Rocky, before you say anything, mm -hmm. <laughs> on your landings, when you're coming out with the landings, I noticed over in um, uh, Westbrook, a number of your landings are wooden. What are these landings going to be? Are they going to be concrete or? Uh, so on the, the, the landings, you're talking about the little porch areas. Yes. Yes. So where the grade drops away, typically we would put a wood deck there if it's, if it's further down. Yeah. But if, if the grade's close, then we typically would pour a concrete pad there. You're talking about on the lowest level. Okay. Yeah. So it's typically, it depends on the grades. Um, I think in this instance where it's you know, pretty flat here, I think these are all, correct me if I'm wrong, Lucas, but I think they're all planned as, as concrete. Good. Okay. Uh, but it, typically it's the grade yeah. that kind of makes that decision. Okay. Uh, I'm pleased about the, um, the, you know, the on-street parking. You know, it's going to be a public, you know, uh, road, but the arrangement where you can have the uh, guests leaving their cars there or people leaving their cars there, you know, I, I like that idea. Um, do I have that correct? I, I believe so. We, we've talked about that with Mike Shaw. Um, you know, he was concerned about the on-street parking and the plowing and whatnot, and, and we agreed that we would, as part of our maintenance, we'll pick up the plowing in that area. Um, we don't need those spaces to meet the requirements, but it's nice to have that, that overflow. Yes. Okay. Uh, Could I address the architecture situation? No. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> well, you, you're the chairman. I mean, you call oh, the shots. Sure, yeah. <laughs> so, Carrier Woods is where we started with this project. <clears throat> the board felt Carrier Woods didn't look good enough, I guess, and so we made a bunch of adjustments. I, I honestly feel like we're, you know, we're, we're designing a horse here, but it's going to turn out to be a camel. Um, Carrier Woods is where we started, and I would invite anybody from the board that would like to tour Carrier Woods, come see it, look at those apartments. They're light, they're bright, they're airy. I think they look nice from the exterior. And, you know, we feel we've made some changes. We thought we made uh, changes that made the buildings look better than Carrier Woods and what we've shown you tonight. We've done a lot of uh, changes based on the board's comments. And frankly, this, this is where we want to be. These are the buildings we want to build. And, and we feel we meet the design criteria. And, and if we don't, I wish somebody would tell me exactly where we don't because we think we've got a good, attractive building. We know it can be built at the right price point and that it's going to be occupied as soon as we can get it built. So I would, I would ask the board to please give me a little more clear direction. If, if, if I've got to change these buildings, I need to know exactly what I've got to change because we think we've got a good building. Well, you know, I'm not talking about major changes. Uh, I think Carrier Woods looks very attractive. And, um, and I think, based on what I'm seeing, that looks better, that looks more attractive than this here. And my sense is that's, I think the board feels the same way. Um, so. That was the building we came to the first time with you folks. That was the plan. Carrier Woods. Identical. Now we're here. Be happy to go back to Carrier Woods. 
Well, we don't, you know, that's, that's the next time you'd be for us, okay? So um, maybe that's a consideration. Does the board have any comment on that? I don't, frankly, I don't recall the original. You know. <coughs> Are you, are you all familiar with Carrier Woods? I'm familiar with Carrier Woods, and, and I've looked over the architecture for this particular project, and honestly, um, to, they're, they're both acceptable uh, for what... I know that you know, this project is big, and there's going to be other areas I know that are going to look different than this. Mm -hmm. um, but I've driven by Carrier Woods on you know, during the day and at night, and uh, it's just, this to me looks like what it's supposed to, to be. It's clean and it's, um, yeah, I don't have any issues with, I, I just, so just for, for me to weigh in, I don't have any issues with the architecture on either side. I would just ask that we go back to the minutes from our workshop when we were talking yeah. about, um, you know, the master planning and sort of what the, not necessarily the promises that were made, but the discussions that we, we were talking about as far as thinking outside the box and what will our neighborhood look like, not, tw not two years from now, 20 years from now, but 100 years from now. What do we want this community to look like? And I think that's where we were all going, and we all got really excited about that. And I think that's where, that's where I think some of the disappointment is coming. Um, I... I understand what you're talking about as far as we there are performance standards and, and character standards that need to be met. Um, we were just looking for some, I think, not to speak for my colleagues completely, but also the ones who aren't here. Um, that 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 that's a place for our workshop, and for and I would encourage us all to go back to the minutes from those workshops where we had those discussions and the back and forths, and 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 that's where I think we we need to go back to. As I recall um, from those uh, that initial meeting, um, I believe uh, Ms. Auglis mentioned that uh, the architecture that was then shown didn't work, and then we were told that was simply a template that was thrown in, that was just put in for purposes of illustration. Uh, so now we're looking at what you're actually proposing, uh, and I, I keep thinking it's ordinary. Uh, and that Scarborough Downs, this whole 20-year uh, project needs to be more than ordinary, it needs to be extraordinary, um, because it is the centerpiece of Scarborough, and it's going to be the centerpiece of Scarborough for a very long time. So 20-year um, build-out, uh, I think we take some time right now and really consider um, what that gateway is going to look like. And the, this is this is the gateway right here. Okay, I would um, I would suggest we're going to have this workshop before the next time you before. No, we're not. Not for not this having phase. to do with this. Not for this. For the next phase, phase two, correct? Right. No, we already had workshops for. Okay. Phase one. So, when are we going to be able to finalize this whole architectural thing? We're not going to discuss I that. I think now's tonight. the time. Now, now's the time. Or at the final site plan, but I think they're looking for direction tonight. I'm looking for the board to tell me that this is acceptable to them and that we can move on. And I can tell you right now, you're not looking at a pioneer. I'm not going to bring you anything that looks much different than what you're looking at right why now. Did, why did we have those discussions before, though, Rocky, that we were talking about outside the box and what will our community there, look there like? There are a lot of things that are going to happen outside the box in this project over time. But this, to be honest with you, Scarborough Downs is the worst piece of land we've ever developed. It's, it's absolutely the worst piece of land we've ever developed. What we've found since we've been into this property is that we don't have utilities. We don't have a roadway system that, that exists. Everything's going to be brand new here. When we start to look at cost and we start to figure out how do we make this project happen, we have to build something that we know will work. I cannot be a pioneer on the first piece of this thing. It just is, it simply isn't going to happen. But we are we going to kick the can down the road and have the, have the pioneer piece be next time? The, Dan showed you some pictures of, a, of being a pioneer um, tonight. He showed you some town center ideas of, that we're working on, and there's a lot of discussion going on about that right now internally. Um, that's where some pioneer stuff could happen, I, I think. But uh, right now, we've got a model that works, and, and this is what we need to build. 
and I'm, I'm asking the board to, did, to did, Have that. you gone back to the minutes of when we were talking about um, sort of, uh, you know, what do, what do we want our community to look like in 20 years and 40 years kind of a thing? I spent a lot of time in the comp plan recently. Yeah, I yeah. spent a lot of time yeah. on architecture, a lot of time on layout, a lot yeah. of time figuring out how to get utilities in here and how to make the numbers work. You, and I understand that's what's at the bottom of this, is that we got to make the numbers work so that you do have money to move on to phase two mm -hmm. and the like. I, I Trust me, I, I don't, I don't uh, envy your, um, your path. And in the meantime, you have a lot of uh, consultants and specialists that need to be paid. Um, but to have us, but, okay. I am not an, you know, I'm not the architectural person. And um, I think what I've, I've heard people say, um, you know, I'm thinking of Corey Fellows is um, mixing textures and colors and, you know, what we're looking, you know, what we're looking at for, for lot two, why isn't that brought to lot one? You know, as far as the, the mixing of textures and, bo you know, board This and is an apartment project that my brothers and I are gonna own. This is what we want to build. We like the color that we're proposing. Okay. We like the simplicity of it, and we feel that it's reasonable. Mm -hmm. That's that's where we're at. Yeah, and I'm I'm really disappointed that our fellow board members aren't here who who've also sort of weighed in on this. And and so I guess I'm going to be quiet because I know others have have uh, points to make. But I think it's important that we think about is this what we want to have it look like twenty uh -huh. years from now. Let me just add a few things. Um, I, uh, I understand, you know, you, you've got to make this all work financially for, for you, okay? And um, I, from my point of view, I would rather go back to what you apparently originally presented to us, which was similar to the carry, uh, carry Woods. Um, and I don't think that's, we're talking about major revamping of the models or anything. It's basically, I have no problem with the, the textures and the different materials you're using and things like that. Just the color accents and a, a trim here or that, there, something like that. That would make a big difference to me. So when you say go back to the Carrier Woods model, you're talking about colors, not the actual uh, building finishes. Well, for instance, I, I notice over there you also have some sort of an emblem or something uh, on the peak, mm -hmm. you know, or, or somewhere on the front of the building. Mm -hmm. And then you had a piece of trim going. I, I just thought they, uh, I think they, I thought they looked more attractive than these. And, and the, the issue with these, I, this is, these are so, these buildings are going to be so prominent as you're coming into this whole development. Um, very, very similar to the first building at, at Carrier Woods, the way it sits close yeah, to the road, yeah. that kind yeah. of, that kind of look. Yeah. So, I mean, that, that's where I'm at on this anyways. Okay. And I, and I, I know you like the white. And <laughs> All my trucks are white. <laughs> White's good. Um, any other board comments? Yeah, um, I would. Dan, could you put back the uh, scheme of the proposed, you know, the mock-up sort of of the town center? Sure. Um, just as I look at that, I know exactly what it reminds me of, and it reminds me of mill towns in Rhode Island. The white buildings, exactly like that, triple. <laughs> three stories where they house the mill workers. Uh, and after a few years, of course, the white goes, and it's pretty shabby. Uh, as if that's where you're going with the town center, I think you need to rethink some of that. And I think you need to rethink the, um, the architecture, the external. I think, Rocky, I think uh, the inside uh, of the buildings, the apartments are great. I think um, people would be pleased to live there, would be beaten down the doors to live there. But I go back to the fact that this is what you see the first time you come into the downs, the first time you come into what is going to be the center of town for the next hundred years. Uh, and I'm not necessarily convinced that the carrier woods colors are the exact thing that we need, um, but I do know that what Carrier Woods did was soften the buildings. 
uh, with the colors and with some of the architecture. And while you may like the stark white, it's either very clean and pristine looking or it is stark and institutional. And people can see that white from both angles. Uh, so I'm asking you to really think about what you want the first thing people to see when they come in. I might as well go one more time just because everybody else did. Okay. Um, I think what I heard was that the board members, some of the board members that aren't here and, and some of the board members that are here tonight kind of expected something a little grander. Um, and I, what I think I heard here tonight from a development standpoint is that we can, we've got a 20 year build and a lot of property and we can get to something grander, but you can't start out building the Taj Mahal and go bankrupt and not be able to finish the rest of the project. So um, I think we as a board just have to work with the development and try to get to some middle ground, um, if that makes sense. I'm wondering if staff have any input on if there's any um, ways that the that the uh, standards, any nuances in the standards that you're, you've picked up on maybe throughout this conversation? I mean, to me, it seems like the board is sort of focusing on the building's visual interest. Um, been reading through the standards as you folks have been talking, and I think from what I'm hearing, the, the board's looking for a little more visual interest in regards to the buildings. I don't know, I don't want to speak for you guys, but that's sort of what I'm picking up on. I think that from what I've read in the standards, that's for in, in respect to this project, it's something that we might, we should talk about as a board, but as far as that meets code um, and it, it meets the standards that are in the standards book. Um, it may not be what was expected, um, and, and, and I think what I heard was that you, eventually there'll be some, it's not a bad, it's, it's not a bad looking, uh, it's not a bad looking building, and it, if it gets us to where we can build a nice town center, I, you know, I understand it's, it's the first thing you see as you drive in, so it's kind of hard, but um, if, if, if building a nice building gets us, keeps us moving forward to a nice town center, I, I, I don't think we can say you can't build that because we don't like the color. I, I mean, I, I don't think the book says we can say that. Well, I think we could just offer an opinion. Mm -hmm. um, and we can, you, you can get that. Like sure, yeah, yeah. It should be based on the standards. Yeah. yeah, it needs, yeah. it's not opinion, it's the standards. Not opinion. Okay. Yeah. We own the land. Yeah. I'm telling you what I want to build. I'd like you to take a vote on it. Why? Do we have to take a vote tonight? I don't if, believe if we, we do. If we don't have to take a vote tonight, I'm not prepared to take a vote. Well, you don't I'm have not to take prepared. a vote, I guess, but I'm going to come back and I'm going to be looking for final approval. When, when we come back, though, can I also have, like, the inventory of natural resources that we've asked for and understand? I, I just want to make sure that, you know, I, I don't want to get bullied here. Um, I think that we've talked a lot about what it is that we have as far as expectations are concerned. And, I, you know, for example, I keep asking... Where's that inventory of natural resources? I, I, I want us to work together. Can, can we work together? Yeah, I think we need to meet with staff to review yeah. what exactly you're looking for for phase one because we submitted everything and more for what was required for okay. the and inventory and the analysis and the master plan. Yeah. So and, and I need some more clarity yeah. as to and what you're looking for. And here's the confusion, I think, is that we're moving for, you know, is that we are moving forward on phase one without really assessing the entire master plan. And I guess maybe the board also needs to talk with staff about, 
um, parsing that out and teasing that part out um, because right. this is what we were afraid of is piecemealing this out. I remember Susan Ogla specifically saying, we piecemeal this out, it's going to get confusing and parts are going to get left behind. Yeah, the, the ordinance requires uh, pieces of this project to be reviewed in 50 acre areas or greater. And so we've been following the ordinance around that. So under the ordinance, um, I, don't, I wouldn't characterize 50 acres as piecemeal necessarily, but under the ordinance, you're allowed to and entitled to apply for a master plan and then subdivision approval um, for those areas. So we've provided everything for this first 50 acres. And in fact, the next round um, is gonna be well beyond that. So uh, we've been working hard to exceed what's required um, in terms of submission mm -hmm. material. And we're just asking for some visual interest. <laughs> I think in the end, that's what it's coming down right. to is some visual interest, so. Um, and so it's, you know, like you said, it's your property. Well, let, let me, um, I have a motion here and the motion will not finalize the architectural situation. So why don't I just make a, uh, read the motion and we can go from there, okay, so we can move, move this on. Okay. I don't have a draft motion for this, do you? I don't believe I have a draft No, no, motion. it's handwritten right here. It's just preliminary subdivision. Just oh, preliminary okay. subdivision, okay? It's official. I'm, it, it's basically, I move to approve the preliminary subdivision plan for carrier, proposed by Carrier uh, Walk Apartment LLC for lot one of the phase one plan development on the property located at map R52, lot four. And that's not finalizing the architectural aspect of this. It's a friendly amendment, it's carriage walk. Carriage, I'm sorry. Carriage walk. Carri carriage, what Can is it, carrier? Mm -hmm. See that, I got that in Can mind. you read that again, Roger, I'm sorry. Sure. <laughs> uh, I, I move to approve the preliminary subdivision plan proposed by Car uh, carriage Walk Apartments, LLC, for lot one of the phase one plan development on the property located on map R52, lot four. Okay, and this is just preliminary subdivision approval? Yes. Okay. I'll second it. Okay. Any? I, I guess I'm not understanding why we're, why we're, is this, is this typical that we do a preliminary motion and there wasn't a draft motion. So for preliminary subdivision, it can be off the cusp. It's not an official motion. It's just to move the project into the final stages. And I believe the applicant's looking for preliminary subdivision approval tonight, so, as I understand that. Um, it, it doesn't Pre say that on the agenda, does it? I believe it does. Yes. yes. Two in a row. So a subdivision process has a two-stage yep. approval process, right. preliminary and final. And Essentially, tonight's. They want to move into the final phase. Right. Correct. And we received preliminary approval for the overall subdivision back in June. Yeah. Would be consistent with that. So if this is preliminary approval for just this, these four buildings. Just the subdivision portion. For final approval, they'd have to come back. Correct. And see us again with all the finalized. Final subdivision and final site plan. So the site plan standards will come into play. Yeah. Again. Okay, my, my second stands. Okay. Any further discussion? Um, is there still room for the visual interest to be added? Okay. Yes, that's the site plan mm -hmm. element. Mm -hmm. But the, it says preliminary subdivision and site plan review. So it will so still- his This is only for preliminary subdivision. Just subdivision. Thank you, okay. Mm -hmm. You all set, Rachel? Yep. Okay, all those in favor? Four, okay. Thank you, you're gonna stay there? I am. Okay, item number 10, M&R Holdings, LLC requests a preliminary subdivision and site plan review for lot two 
of the Crossroads Plan Development District, which is the Mill Commons duplex and condos. Um, this is uh, phase one, assessors map R52, lot four. So I just have a quick overview. Um, so again, preliminary subdivision review. Um, for lot two, the phase one plan development, the applicant's proposing to construct a new 1100 foot long private street to support eight duplexes and four eight unit condominium buildings. And many of staff comments are echoed for this agenda item, given the logistics are very similar uh, for this lot in regards to the sequencing um, of approvals. That's all I have. Thank you. Uh, as Mr. Torres introduced, a very similar request being asked of the board. You've seen um, lot two before under site plan in July. Um, this lot two includes um, four eight-unit garden condominiums. Um, that's the building before you. It's a two-story building with uh, four units per floor. Um, and that includes, in addition to that, there are eight single-story duplex units um, that are proposed along uh, Mill Common um, Drive. And um, so there's going to be a street that, that serves um, the duplexes. It's also going to be serving a lot three, which is going to be uh, a memory care facility, which is not on your agenda this evening, that you reviewed at site plan in July. That will come back to you um, at a subsequent meeting. And since the discussion we had at the last site plan meeting, um, we submitted also a lighting plan for, for this particular lot in subdivision. Uh, the lighting are LED fixtures that meet the town standard. We're using um, the Arabelle. Uh, light fixtures that the town uses in similar uh, situations on, on public streets, um, and then some parking lot lighting that for the, the eight unit, unit condominiums. Uh, in addition to that, we've updated the landscaping plan. We added bike racks, we talked about last time. Um, and a lot of the same kind of comments around uh, the buffers to the stream supply, because this is just south of that intermittent stream, so we'd have a 75-foot buffer to that stream. Um, and we've actually added a retaining wall to enable that buffer to exist in its current state, um, which would be to the rear of some of the duplex units. And we also have the 100-foot buffer to Mill Brook. Um, and beyond that, a uh, very similar approach to stormwater that Lucas can talk in more detail if you have questions, but a distributed system with a lot of kind of focal point technology, the same, essentially the same systems Lucas described. Um, there's a wetland area within a common that we're kind of deliberately protecting um, and having a boardwalk around and landscaping around as, a, as an amenity for this, uh, this particular lot. And uh, lastly, in terms of architecture, um, there was, similar to our last conversation, there was um, interest in seeing a better connection between the units uh, in this particular lot. So the adjustments that were made were a unification of the materials between the eight unit buildings and the two unit buildings. Um, so this particular building has kind of the white clapboard siding, um, but also gray shingles at the kind of the gable end at that peak. Um, and that would be on both sides of the building. Uh, black window trim, uh, black uh, roofing. So that's showing uh, the architecture for the eight unit buildings. And then given that it's going to be really in the same neighborhood in close proximity to each other, um, these are the, the duplexes um, that have a lot of the same architectural treatments or, uh, with the, the shingles uh, in the higher uh, gable ends or uh, space above the main entrances. Um, so we've been making adjustments since your last meeting to, to again, to create more interest in terms of the, the building architecture and, and unify them so that there's a relationship there. Um, so with that, I'll, I'll turn it back to you, Mr. Chair. Okay. This is. Uh this is open for public comment if anybody wishes to comment. I'm not hearing any. Um, 
Smith, you want to start this one off? Well, um, as far as the the parking goes on this, I hate to keep going back to parking, but as far as the parking goes on the on the garden condominiums, can you put that up there? Yep. So there, each unit um, is two units, right? Basically, each one of those is, is like a duplex. Correct. Okay. So um, there's no need for additional parking for any of those, I guess, other than, is there any street parking, I guess? There is on-street parking in these locations. That's designed for, again, guest parking, overflow parking, <coughs> um, primarily for the duplexes, but yeah. there's also this lot three that's not before you tonight that has some additional parking right across the street from it for yeah. overflow for that. That's kind of what I was looking for. I didn't think I saw it on these drawings, but um, maybe I just didn't look hard enough. Um, I was kind of looking for that continuity, like you said, between that, the other buildings and those ones. Um, I, like, do, I do like that the architecture matches um, somewhat. And, um, and then as far as the, that little wetland piece right there, is that um, is that like green space around that? Is that what the idea? It is. There's um, there's stormwater management proposed around it. Yeah. It's proposed to be planted in a way that creates you know with with native species that creates a bit of a microhabitat there. Um, yeah. In addition to treating the stormwater, and then these are paths for the, the entire neighborhood to use. There's a boardwalk here across. Yeah one of the outfalls, um, where there's going to be tree plantings to add some shade and canopy. And then there's irrigation throughout that whole, both lot, the earlier one that we looked at and this one, right? Wasn't, didn't I see irrigation on the plan, or no? There's going to be irrigation for lot three, which is not before you. Um, oh, okay. No, there's, I mean, it's proposed to be served by a public water and sewer, of course. Yeah, I, I, and I knew it was public water and sewer. For some reason, I thought I saw in one of the plants that there was irrigation, but maybe that's maybe I didn't. Maybe I was looking at something else. We typically do irrigation on our on our apartments and, and condominiums. I don't think it's shown on the utilities plan, though. No. Okay. Yeah, I don't have any questions other than what I've already asked. It's very similar to what yeah. they're doing on the other one. Rachel? Yeah, I appreciate the changes that you've made in terms of the architecture. I think it works. Um, I think it unifies the condos and the duplexes uh, and provides that sort of visual interest. Um, I do have a question on the garages. Do they have, there's no back um, sketch of them. There's no back view of the garages. The blank wall? Our landscape architect still looking at the details of that, so we can provide that for your next meeting. Um, but we haven't gener we haven't finished architectural details for the garages. Because I, I noticed that one of them is 108 feet long, and if the building is over 100 feet, there's got to be some sort of visual articulation. Yeah. yeah. So and be, without that, um, the view of the back. I don't know. I, I, they're going to be. Entrances from the back? Are there going to be doors that are going in? No, the doors. Uh, well, you're so, saying no, and Rocky's yes. saying yes. yes. I know the floor plan. Uh, yeah. So, um, <laughs> the backs of the buildings, there's, there's a sunroom area, uh, there's a boiler room, um, so there's some, there's some jog there, and uh, windows. Um, so, those will show on the, on the uh, floor plans. We can show you a, a architectural rendition of the, of the back of the building, but it's, okay. it's not a straight line. All right, good, because, and there are some standards around uh, the architecture for the, uh, in terms of uh, screening from the abutters, so I'm assuming that we'll see that at the next time. I think we, I think we got, I, I thought you were talking about the garage, the freestanding garages. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. 
Yeah, I'm the looking three, at the picture of the. I'm looking at the picture. No, the three, the, the freestanding garages. One of them is 108 feet. Everything I told you, disregard what I told okay. you. Okay. So, the so Dan, of, Dan's nodding was right, and your nodding was wrong. He's in the right place. Okay. okay. Um, the freestanding garages. There, there are no windows in the back. There's no. They are a straight line, but there's a lot of architect. There's a lot of um, landscaping behind those buildings. So we see those buildings as a buffer uh, from that uh, park area, if you will. The way they, they set in there, so we'll show you a picture of what that. Yeah, and I I, I see on the uh, L one zero zero, I see that there is that uh, screening and buffer for one of the garages. The other two garages um, have uh, the duplexes as a butters. That's so I'm wondering what's the what that sort of screening might look like. And what again, one of them is uh, <coughs> eight feet over the hundred. So when we when we next we look at this, we're going to see what that what happens there. Okay, thank you. And again, I appreciate the changes, the visual changes that you've made. I think it dramatically enhances the uh, the look of that whole area. Thank you. Okay. Robin, do you have an artist rendition of the retaining wall in that whole area there? The, our landscape architect is still working on it, so we do not have one to show you. The retaining wall will have a chain link fence on you're, top of it. You're referring to the one by the in the common. Is that what you're? Is that one you're thinking of? I'm looking at drawing C211. Because there's going to be two retaining walls. There's the mm -hmm. one by the wetland. Yep, um, that's the one I'm looking okay. at. Okay. Yeah. He's working on a design. For I was just going to say that's the strong wall brand that, that uh, is made by Precast Concrete Products of Maine. What does the facade look like? Pardon me? What does the facade look like? It's got like a rock face to it. Okay. They're, they're the large blocks, so. Okay. Uh, Roger, I have one more question. What's up? I'll go ahead. Keep going. Get, uh, Did you want to go? go no, ahead. I just I, I just had one more question that I noticed. If I could ask, yeah. um, Rocky, I'm looking at the uh, uh, the plan for the um, two story condos, and I noticed that there's a screen on the uh, ground floor patio. What what is that made out of? At least in the sketch I've got. Might be. I can't see it, Dan. That's one of those maintenance questions. Ultimately, what? Screen. Oh. That's mm -hmm. similar to what we did. Can I blow that yeah, on my sure. finger? Did I just do that? <laughs> yes, that's similar to what we did at Carrier Woods where we were hiding the um, AC units. So there's uh, lattice work that goes. Okay. Goes and, and I it's, think that's what you're referring yeah, to. Yeah, that's, right? that's right. what I mean. It's place. made out of what? It, it's vinyl lattice work. Okay. All right. Thank you. Robert. Back to me. Back to you. So um, can I assume then that your interagency reviews for this lot were done at the same time as lot one? Correct. We applied for a uh, stormwater permit for all of phase one as a package. And your IF and W and MH um, PC yep. consultation? Yep. We submitted it all as one large phase. Okay. This, this is being broken up. Um, only at the local level because there's going to be independent owners ultimately of each lot not to okay. change the state level permitting. So it's larger common plan of development so you're actually getting site law permits? We're not getting site law because you have that, the town has that jurisdiction for okay. this size project. Okay. Um, Can you, exp I, I guess I just can't put my head around why there's a, a, a retaining wall through the wetland. That same one I was talking about. There's what am I a, missing? There's a retaining wall through the wetland because part of the wetland is filled for the road. Uh, the, to have an interconnected wetlands? road. Say it again. There's a retaining wall to support the road because the zoning requires a grid road system, and we're proposing a loop road through 
lot two to provide access to all the units. Okay. So the retaining wall is protecting half of the wetland from impact and, and then supporting the road. Okay. So are you, are you getting Army Corps permits for that? Yeah, there's there's an NRPA application into DEP, and then there's also an Army Corps okay. application. Correct. Mm -hmm. That's all I have. Also, anybody else have any other questions? Yeah, all good. All right. Um, I I don't have any comments really. I like, I, I like the architecture on these buildings. Um, I'm pretty well all set, so I have a motion, and it's very similar to the uh, previous one. So I move to approve the preliminary subdivision plan proposed by Mill Commons Development LLC for Lot 2 of the Phase 1 plan development on the property located at Map R52, Lot 4. Is there a second? I'll second. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Okay, four. Thank you. Was that subdivision only? Yes. Yes. Item number 11, Alea Scarborough requests a sketch plan review of 10 Southgate Road, assesses map U37, lot 7. Mr. All right, so this project uh, is in, quoted, located in the industrial zone at 10 Southgate Road. Uh, the proposal's, proposal is before the board for a sketch plan review for a 7,000 square foot three-story building addition at their existing facility. Uh, just a reminder that the sketch plan review is an opportunity for the board and the applicant to have a high-level discussion about the proposed building addition um, and provide guidance before they submit a final application for site plan review. It appears that the proposed building addition will result in the elimination of 12 parking spaces on the site. The applicant should uh, ensure the board that they will have adequate parking for the proposed addition project. The Public Works Department has expressed concerns some, about the safety of the existing mid-block crosswalk along Southgate Road that provides access to the satellite parking lot across the street. Uh, given that the applicant is proposing to build additional production and office space, they should discuss with the board how they plan to improve the safety for pedestrians using this mid-block crosswalk. Uh, the applicant indicated that the project would be phased but did not provide any details about the phasing. Uh, the applicant should discuss the proposed phasing of the project. And finally, the applicant is encouraged to coordinate with the town engineer in regards to the proposed stormwater management system on the site. That's what I have. Okay. The applicant. Yes, sure. uh, good evening. I'm Norm Chamberlain with Walsh Engineering. Um, okay. Plug this one in, Jamal. Just go ahead and plug it in. Uh, yeah, you should be able to override. My screen. Okay, so I got a, a color plan of what Jamal had. This is actually a bit further along than uh, it was when we submitted this. We actually submitted a site plan review today for the um, was it September 17th meeting. Um, this is a a rush project. Um, Abbott is the applicant now. Alaire Scarborough was bought out by Abbott, and so we're, we're going by Abbott for the see Alaire and Abbott a lot. But um, basically, they are trying to get this um, footprint in so that they can get a machine in as soon as possible for the um, winter of 2019 to make flu shot uh, <coughs> kits. And um, so, this is a real fast track. Uh, we're going to be following this up with a, a uh, phase two, which is going to be a much larger building. Um, I've got, uh, this is a 
rendering. So the yellow is the phase one and the lighter yellow out here. Let me zoom that in. It was working a minute ago, there we go. So this lighter yellow is gonna be the future addition to the addition. Um, we are not requesting approval for that. We are just looking for the, uh, this footprint here, uh, plus offices on the second floor. There will be a third floor, but we don't have uh, enough parking to support that. So we're requesting that we get approval for a vacant third floor. Phase two is going to include some uh, parking over in here, as long as as well as this addition, and is much more involved with uh, DEP approvals and and everything else. Um, this dark yellow addition is uh, 7,870 square feet. Uh, we actually reduce our impervious surface by 92 square feet with uh, the creation of a little bit of a green along here. Where um, this is all parking. We um, Currently, the site has 329 parking spaces. We'll be left with uh, uh, 317 spaces after construction of this building with the parking left along this side of the building and, and on the north here. Uh, based on uh, the town's parking ordinance, we are only required to have 315 based on the addition of this building plus the existing space within the uh, structure. So we, we think we meet all the parking need um, as far as that goes. At this time, we're not requesting any stormwater. This building addition is less than 10,000 square feet and would fall under the exemption for a main DEP uh, minor addition on a site location uh, site. Uh, obviously, when we get to the second phase, we're gonna have to deal with all that and uh, we intend to do that. Um, that's about all I have on the existing um, and, and proposed development. We are proposing a, a lighted uh, LED sign at the crosswalk so that as pedestrians cross, uh, it's right here, they cross there, they can push a button and an LED, LED sign will light up around a pedestrian crossing sign. Alaire actually tried to put that in uh, last February but we're stopped uh, by code enforcement and we'd, we'd like to get approval to put that in. Um, there, there's very little sight distance and when people come around there in the, in the winter, it's pretty dark and, and pedestrians can't be seen. So uh, it's not as much of a problem at this time. Uh, I know there was a suggestion on moving it down further, uh, but the main entrance, there's two main entrances, one there and one here. And my guess is if we put an entrance down there further from the corner, people are just still gonna cross right there, whether there's a sidewalk or not. So we'd, we'd like to get approval from that. They already have the equipment. They bought it last winter and we're literally installing it when they stopped. So um, We are in the process of requesting uh, ability to serve letters from both uh, Public, Wa Public uh, Water, Portland Water District and Scarborough Sanitary District. Uh, we, we hope to have those by the time we get here uh, in three weeks. Um, so we hope to have all our ducks in a row as far as uh, moving this along. We'd like to get approval as quick as we can so they can start construction on this first phase and get that building up to get the machine in there. Uh, I've got Ryan, Ryan Senator here. He's got some architecturals that he can show you. Good evening, I'm Ryan Senator with RSA, the project architect. Um, I want to kind of introduce you a, a bit to the actual edition and what it, uh, what it looks like. Um, as, as mentioned, this, we're trying to uh, move this along swiftly, so I thought the more uh, detail up front may be uh, good to all get on the same page. Um, as you can see in the first floor plan here, um, the first floor is primarily um, produ production space for that uh, large machine, um, which is kind of driving the schedule of the project. Um, it, it's an addition onto the existing building. Um, we have um, basically two egress stairs, uh, an elevator, and then this uh, production space. Um, which one? Oh, 
just use it for touch screen. Um, all right, we'll get it here. So the second uh, second level is a similar um, plan footprint. Um, again, two stairs, an elevator, um, kind of a plumbing core in the center, and then. Um, it's either going to be open office or divided into offices on the perimeter. Um, we're still trying to iron out the, uh, the balance of that. Um, and then the third level, um, at this stage, um, uh, like Norm mentioned, uh, we don't have the parking to support this, so we would just build it as shell space, and we wouldn't apply for an occupancy permit for that level until um, we could prove we have the parking for it. But just the nature of construction costs and you know, not building a roof and then building a building on top of it. It's just the long-term plan is we're going to do it, but so we're kind of trying to build that infrastructure in now. Um, and so here are some of the uh, exterior renderings of the building. Um, I passed around some material samples, but what we're, what we're doing is really utilizing the materials that um, exist on the building today. So basically there's two, um, two uh, siding materials. There's a corrugated uh, metal panel, which is kind of the darker charcoal color, and then a lighter silver, um, more flat uh, reveal panel, which is uh, exists on the front of the building now. So really trying to keep with um, the existing materials. Um, we are kind of doing some nice um, projecting fins, we call them, the, the bluer elements um, that kind of break up the massing of this relatively large uh, structure and create shadow lines and some visual interest. Um, the uh, you know and so uh, the the top rendering here you can see the the new um, proposed entry which is kind of a vertical glass element uh, where the elevator will be and kind of create a um, kind of a visual entry um, for this will be primarily for the um, employees uh, production and office uh, the visitor entrance will remain uh, where Norm pointed out where, where the current kind of main parking entrance is um, the like, again the building is three stories. Um, there is a rooftop stair access. Um, you know, one thing um, that's important is mechanical equipment access. So um, anything that would be on the roof, we would want to be able to uh, easily service. Um, so, I mean, again, so the, the architecture kind of expands on what's there. And the idea is that it's a high quality um, kind of tech feeling building, which represents kind of that district and uh, what they do at Abbott, which is pretty, pretty exciting and, and you know, um, innovative stuff. Um, and so here are just some more three-dimensional renderings um, of the of the building. So thank thank you. Okay. Are you all set? I believe so. If you have questions, sure. we'd be happy to answer them. Okay. We're trying to give you as much information as we can at sure. this sketch phase, so we're ready to go in three weeks. Yeah, I don't um, envy your task and I appreciate you being sort of as, as forthright as possible kind of a thing so a couple of questions I have is um, first for staff can we sort of delay the occupancy permit for the third floor I mean it seems like once it's built you know who's to say what they put in there because it's private property we couldn't necessarily go in and check on those things kind of a thing so What's, uh, that's a new one for that's me. That's a new one for me too. Um, I'll have to look into that and circle okay. back. Okay, um, thank I'm not, you. I'm actually not sure. No, so, and I appreciate you saying that. I'd like yeah. to get back to you, kind of a thing. So we'll, we'll invite Jamal to to lunch every quarter to you take think? a walk through the third floor. Okay. <laughs> um, no, that's appreciated. Um, and and the service that the company is doing, as far as you know, that's it's it's a, a, an incredible public health so, um, to be making the. Uh, flu test kits kind of a thing. Is that what I heard you say that that happens? Among there? other things. So you, What's yeah, that? Think that all, all kind of stuff Sorry, can you just go to the microphone? <laughs> um, Dennis Boston. I'm the facilities manager at Abbott mm -hmm. at this site. Um, so we, we manufacture, develop, um, distribute diagnostic tests, rapid diagnostics for uh, typically respiratory is our focus so mm -hmm. that's what goes on at this site that's where we uh, that's where we started excellent 30 years ago wow right um, here in Scarborough excellent yeah and we started in as Binax became Inverness Medical mm -hmm. then Alir and then recently within the last year got bought out by 
at it, which is a $30 billion company. Excellent. So we're doing the best that we can to, to keep this site thriving and growing. Yep. Um, so we're putting together really a, a five-year plan. This is okay. the first step in that to, to really balance out our production and make sure that we have enough capacity to move on. Okay, and so that takes me to my next question, which is um, I understand that you want to put off doing the parking, you know, because you, you want to have that third floor to, to have the capacity to bring in more and to respond to the market needs. Yeah. Um, but I'm just, I guess I'm just worried about parking and if you want to hand it over to Norm or whatever, we can, we can talk about that. So we, we had talked about doing this as a one-phase project and because it involves a DEP application and stormwater management, we wouldn't be getting permitting until probably January or February. So that would put off start of construction I see. until the spring. Okay. So what we're hoping is that we can get approval this fall to put the foundation in and get the the three walls and the roof on by spring so that they can get the machine in there. All the while, we'll be talking to you and DEP about permitting for the second okay. phase. And um, do you own... Which includes a, a, the parking lot. Sure. They do own the lot next door. Okay, that's exactly where I was going. You own the lot next door, and what's the approximate um, area, square footage kind of a thing that you'll need um, for the parking? I, I don't know that off the top of my head. I know Sebago Technics did a, a development proposal that was approved by mm -hmm. the, the town uh, mm -hmm. a couple of years okay. ago. What we're finding in this area is, um, in the industrial, this industrial park, um, is that there's a, there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of either wetlands um, there, or there's shared stormwater systems, or folks are relying on some, I, and I, I can't visualize what the back of your lot looks like, but it doesn't look like there's a lot of a tree stand there. A lot of folks are using, you know, forested buffers for stormwater management, which you know needs to be deeded and with covenants kind of a thing to make sure that their neighbor doesn't cut it down to make more parking. <laughs> so we want to make sure that it's not this like continuous snowball of kicking the can down the road right. as far as stormwater management is concerned. We, we are looking at some alternatives. Our, our, this property here, uh, which was originally a lair, is pretty well fully developed, as you can see. Yeah. There is a stormwater management feature over here that was built, I believe, as part of the warehouse addition that yep. was, uh, I'm gonna say the 90s, mm -hmm. 2000, some, somewhere around there. Um, I'm looking at Angela because <laughs> I don't know. Um, but we've, we, we've talked about development, we talked with the neighbors about developing over here. We've got uh, wetland issues there. Um, we know what this site is look, looks like because it's already been uh, proposed for development and they've gotten NERPA permits. So, you know, we're looking at something different, uh, basically a parking lot. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I think that's going to pretty much max this yeah. site out. So, so I guess um, I, uh, I have a couple comments, I guess, I would like you all to think about as this is a sketch plan um, type of phase is don't underestimate landscaping in this area and the power of sort of underground stormwater storage and detention and mixing them all together kind of a thing because this is the, you know, I go to other towns, industrial parks, and I'm like, oh, wow, this industrial park looks great. Um, so I just don't want you to underestimate, you know, No, and I understand. We've, and we've had a lot of internal discussions, yeah. and I've been talking with Ryan uh, we do have a, a, an elevation issue. Uh, we are very, very low. We are totally to the point understand. where this this area right here yep. will flood yep. with water backing up from yep. the marsh. Um, so we're looking at building up as much as we can using uh, lower profile type underground systems yep. like uh, permeable, permeable pavers. Uh, we've also had a discussion about green roofs. Great. Um, so we're, you know, we're, we are going to have to deal with uh, stormwater yeah. detention and uh, water quality, and we know that. Well, I, I challenge you all to be as innovative as possible, right. and it sounds like you have an innovative team, you have an innovative corporate corporation um, client, um, and uh, just keep doing what you're doing. It's nice to know that this is right here in Scarborough, right. and and again, don't overlook the landscape. Okay. Please. But but as you can see, this. This proposal was designed to 
fit within all the boxes so we could get started this fall. Good luck. <laughs> Rachel? Yeah, um, I echo the good luck there. Um, <laughs> it, there's a lot of, I, 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 this, this is complicated. Uh, let me ask you, what's the total height of the uh, I believe the three 50 floors. 55 feet, so 55 it's feet. the 60 feet. Uh, 55 feet to the top of the rooftop stair, about 45 to the main oh. roof level. So. Okay, so that, um, <coughs> you could go back. I was thinking it was a, um, wondering if it was the top of the elevator shaft, that tall. That's 55. That's the 55, okay, and the rest of it's 45, all right. Um, I, I like the architecture. I, I'm, uh, I'm not familiar with the, the rest of the building, so I'm going to be looking at how you manage to integrate all of the different elements together as you put in, uh, as you put in this addition. Uh, how it's going to work with the rest of the, the building that's already there and anticipate what you're going to be doing and what will come. So I, I think it's exciting. I uh, appreciate the work you're doing. And uh, parking's going to be a problem, as, as you know, and I echo Robin's uh, request on, on the landscaping, um, that uh, landscaping does break up the mass of a building, and you're going to have uh, a really big one by the time you're done there. So, uh, good luck. Thank you. Rick. Yeah, I just have a couple things. Um, as far as the third floor goes, I think what you said timing, and, and of course this will be Jamal and staff that figures this out probably, but I had a couple of thoughts. As, as far as, you want to start the building now, and you want to do all three floors, I understand that, and I understand the reasons behind it. Um, but you're anticipating having the permits that would allow you to expand the parking to actually use that third floor sometime in the spring. Correct. That's what I heard. Okay. So currently you have the downstairs permitted or, or requesting in this proposal, in this process, the, the first floor's production and the second floor's office. Correct. And eventually, I'm guessing the third floor will be office. Correct. Okay. So the office space is four spaces per thousand square feet, right? Yes. Okay. Um, warehouse space is two spaces per thousand square feet, right? Uh, two per 2,000? On your print right here, it says, <laughs> what's it say? Uh, I think oh, I don't, I don't have it, it right. says warehouse space two per thousand. Okay, it's production space two th per thousand and office space four per right. thousand, right? And that's okay. what I remember from the code as well. Right, and that's that's how we calculated it. Correct, but I think potentially in in this process to get get your building up in time, in expectation that you'll get your permits you may have to get the planning board's approval on warehouse space for the second and third floor, knowing that you're gonna get your permits and then you'll be able to make them both office space. That makes okay. sense? That because you be have enough parking for warehouse, to, you have okay. enough parking a warehouse on the second floor and the third floor. That would be our backup plan. If you look right here, this is a, an aerial photo, photo we took with a drone a couple of weeks ago. And this building right here is a portable that is uh, housing people and they want to get rid of that and put those people and some others into the second floor over so here. So would that give you enough parking if you tore down the portable? Is that what you're saying? No, we wouldn't gain any parking. That's all loading and, and okay. trash disposal and so things like I guess that. But um, I mean, we're hoping to have that second floor as office space so they can they can get some breathing room because right now they're crammed into the 
spaces that they have. Right. But hopefully you'd have your permits in place by the time they were ready to move yeah. in there, right? So I'm just looking at it from a st timing standpoint, and I'm, not, I'm sure staff has to do a little research into it. But potentially, you may not get planning board approval based on having office space and warehouse space and not enough parking to support that. But you would be more likely to get approval if you called them both warehouse space so that you had the parking to support the building structure and then get the permits and then right. change it. I think, if, you know, Jamal and... But that would get you to where you need to be, rather than having we could someone do that. say, "Yeah, we can't give you we can't give you permission to build a third floor if you don't have the park." You're not going to have that office space ready until next summer anyway. Right? Right. Well, it's something to, it's something to think about and consider um, because I don't, I'm not sure how the rest of the board feels, and there's a lot of board members not here right now. But um, to give approval based on you're going to add parking for me would be kind of an issue um uh, they, they, we actually had a, a parking study done two years ago uh where it worked out that they they basically needed two spaces per thousand square for, feet for the entire facility okay well um, maybe you could present that and see what the board right and we had talked about that but that requires us to go to the zoning board of appeals to get that approved okay. before we come here and we were looking at the timeline Right. When this was approved to go, it was we, we thought this was our best bet, and, and your idea wouldn't uh, impact that. Whether it's office space or warehouse space for the winter doesn't make any difference because it's not there. Right. It's not being used. I mean, I can see you getting site plan approval because from the board because the footprint's the same whether it's two stories or ten stories, right? Right. So, um, but as far as you know, when we get to that final approval stage, it might be tougher if we didn't have something something worked out. You know, you could always have your architect raise the building and put the parking underneath too, right? That was part of the discussion. <laughs> really? You thought yes. that? I don't know how heavy that machine is, though. You don't want to land it on someone's car. <laughs> um, it's getting it up above dock level is the, the issue. <laughs> I've seen some really nice Duke engine. There's some really nice buildings in Portland that have the parking underneath. Yeah. It's kind of neat because then your car stays in the shade and not in the snow. Mm -hmm. Just a thought. Um, I know it's expensive. Um, oh, and then I guess the other only other note I made was on the on the. You mentioned just because you mentioned it, and no one else mentioned it, and I'm the last one to go. Um, but I did see s smiles and, and the tip. That crossing sign. As far as, I, I'm not saying it's a good idea or a bad idea. I mean, I, I, it's probably a good idea, but I'm, I don't think that's the board's call. I think that's the town engineer and the, and the, and the town. <coughs> I guess I can provide some background, I yeah. guess, on the crosswalk a little bit. Um, I know I'll, we did get complaints from some um, employees at Alaire because trying to cross that. Um, and, the problem is, is obviously the parking being across the street. They proposed that when they did, whenever they did the building um, for the parking, and so obviously trying to provide a safe crossing is key. And then we're hearing it's not a safe crossing. So um, I am always beating the drum of mid-block crosswalks are not safe um, on their own. So you got to do a lot to make a mid-block cr uh, crosswalk safe and. So it really needs some thought put into it. Um, and that means not only, um, say, a push button flashing sign at the crossing, but in this case, because of that dangerous curve, it also means <coughs> probably some advanced warning of that coming. Um, I, and obviously, ideally, would be to move away from the curb, uh, curve, which I understand what you're saying is people do the shortest route. So doesn't really achieve what, what you really want. But um, I think at the time it was being installed without a real plan and without, um, I guess, having the right uh, permits to work within the right of way at the time. So that's when Own Public Works did step in um, and myself. So it really needs um, a bigger plan to say, this is how we're gonna make it safe rather than just kind of knee jerk we got to throw something up there so people feel safe. I think we really need to make people safe rather than just make them feel safe. Um, 
And so that was the point is let's put a little bit of time and effort into looking at the design. Mm -hmm. Okay, so would that be a plan that we would run, you know, That work I think with you? should be part of this plan, yeah. um, which can be when you submit. Um, and it's something that Public Works and myself can review. Um, but I think that was the key is really advanced detection. And I think that was the complaint we heard from a lot of employees there was just the speed people come around that curve. Mm -hmm. um, and it is blind. So it's really um, having some advanced warning, I think, would be key. And that's also not a continuous flashing light or um, because no, then it's, people it's for forget it's there. Right, it's for it, a you just of become time. immune to it. It has to be something right. that's only on when someone's crossing kind of thing. So there's different elements that need to kind of play okay. into the design. Well, uh, excuse me. A Angela, did, was there any thought given to a raised table, a crosswalk, so that the cars... The first time they, they hit it, they'll, from then on, they'll slow down. <laughs> uh, I think that's an, probably an easy thing for yeah. maybe the applicant to propose. Um, however, it's not an easy thing for public works to yeah. maintain forevermore. And I would say that you would probably get a comment from the public works director yeah. on that. I, it's a good, it's a nice thought, but yeah. around the corner in the winter and the snow, when you hit that thimble, <laughs> I think you'd be in that yeah. park. <laughs> but he liked it <laughs> No, I, th I think we could do something with, I mean, what we presented in the package that we submitted today was okay. essentially what uh, Abbott had done before, but we can look at some options to bring a, a light around the corner that's attached to the whole system. Mm -hmm. And so you've got two lights at the crosswalk, you've got a, uh, a light around the corner that says pedestrian crossing, so they theoretically will right. slow Right, and, and really having a plan on the wiring and things too, I think it was kind of a direct very... Right. kind of thing and we need to get across the street I mean there's more to the plan than it was okay. and I understand the, the purpose why um, which I think I credit I mean it's a good thing for an employee to say I need to do something and we need to get you know so our employees are safe I, I get that but um, it also can be a detriment to, for people to think they're safe when it's not really providing the benefit mm -hmm. that they should okay. have well so. we just got involved in this very recently yep. and um, you know, the emails I saw were, we didn't know why we were being stopped and, and things like yeah. that. And so um, what we'd like to do, though, is if, if that process drags out a little bit, we'd like to try and separate it from the building because that is a critical path for Abbott at this point. And, you know, if we can separate it and, and you know, we have a few more <coughs> meetings about the crosswalk, if it has to be before this board, or they give us approval and say work with... Angela and Public Works, we'd be happy to do that. Okay. So the, the submission, though, is next Monday, correct? The deadline for these for guys? For a new application, it's three but, For new. But for sketch? Sketch does doesn't count. count. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, yeah. yeah, I think for sketch plan, we could move forward. But for, you know, when, you, when I doubt very much you're going to get any kind of final approval mm -hmm. without having that all worked out, mm -hmm. that sign all worked out. But mm -hmm. I can't speak for the whole board, so I'm sorry. But, it's, you know, to, to say we'll figure it out later, that's not typically what we're well, going to do. Yeah, you know, okay. That's I understand saying. what you're I mean, saying. Yeah. But, I mean, work with Angela, work with Public Works. She's if, pretty smart. And, pretty and if the board's comfortable, we can come up with certain conditions. Because right. I, I will say yeah. um, we have formed, staff has formed a traffic safety committee, which includes Public Works, myself, and PD, the police department. Which, so we could come up with some crafting if you guys are comfortable with, and we can throw it out there as some suggestions if, if it gets to that. I mean, if, if the, the three sign uh, option is uh, something that looks favorable, so one side either side of the road at the crosswalk with a third attached sign around the corner, we can uh, pull something together with that. Yeah, I would default when you know when she right. says that you're good I think then okay. it'll be yep. good okay but, but it would there'd have to be something worked out before mm -hmm. we could give final approval okay I'll be glad to sorry all set <laughs> yeah I think I'm I think I'm done yeah you all set Rachel yeah I'm excited to see what you're doing now okay. it's really great yeah looking forward to having that I, I just have a couple of questions um, I'm not clear. The, the light yellow, uh, tan, what is it? That's, that? that's phase two. 
what we, we anticipate phase two is going to look like. Oh, okay. okay. So we're, we're looking for approval of, of this building here. Just the bright yellow. Just the bright yellow. Yeah. And then I just wanted to show you what we're anticipating phase two is going to look like. We would have uh, a, a drive aisle alongside the building with sidewalk and esplanade and then parking on the far side. Okay. Um, the lot uh, down below there on the left, which you, I, you said you own that, right? This one right here? Uh, yes. Right here. Yes. Is there any possibility of that becoming, uh, doing away with the other parking lot and put all your parking in there? Is there enough room for that or no? Doing, no, there's not enough room okay, for that. Okay, all right, okay. Um, yeah, there's, there's quite a bit of wetlands. Uh, yeah. You can see where the trees are right, yeah. right here. So the upland area is about like this. So, you know, to impact the 15 to 1,000 to, to an acre of wetlands, uh, you know, anything over 15,000 increases the approval time significantly. Sure, yeah. Um, so, you know, we're trying to keep this on track for next spring. Okay. Um, I, I think the building looks terrific. Uh, I like the architectural renderings. So uh, I have nothing further. Uh, so we all set on this? The board's good. The board all set? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. I think they're all the way down the end. Yeah. Angela probably has <coughs> Take a five minute break, okay? Five minute break? Okay. He's gonna take a five minute break.
Yeah. Excuse me. We're ready to. <laughs> okay, item number 12. 3 East Grand Avenue LLC request a site plan amendment for review of 3 East Grand Avenue assessors map U22 lot 123. Garage barbecue. Hi. Um, oh, my oh, name oh, sorry. Excuse me. <laughs> Just going to give a quick staff overview. Oh. Sorry about that. That's okay. Uh, so, this is located in the TVC4 zoning district. Like you said, 3 East Grand Ave. Uh, the existing location of garage barbecue. The applicant is proposing a site plan amendment to stay open from April 1st through December 31st. <coughs> As the board may recall, the original season of operation is stated on the final plan set as April 1 through October 31st. Um, so the applicant has provided the board with a narrative to serve as, a final, as the final plan set as an addendum to the approved plan. Uh, so the, as the board may recall, during the original review process here, there's limited parking on site, and the applicant use, utilizes satellite parking, I believe, at the snow canning property on Pine Point Road. Uh, given that the approved season of operation is April 1 through October 31, snow storage and removal provisions were not considered during the original review process. So given that the applicant is proposing to stay open through December, which we typically see some snow, usually, uh, they will need to provide a detailed snow storage and removal plan for the site. Staff would also like to note that the sidewalk between the snow canning site and the restaurant is not plowed by the town. So provided these circumstances, the applicant should ensure the board that they will have adequate parking during the winter season. That's all I have. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so um, my name is Susan Bailey Clow. Uh, I represent Threes Grand. Um, my husband, my father, and myself uh, on the building, and we are running the garage barbecue. We did get permitted, as, as Jamal just said. Um, We've been requested by many of our customers to stay open later in the season, which, to be honest with you, may or may not be financially feasible. Um, we'd like the ability to, to try and see if that's the possible, if that's going to work for us. Um, in the long run, it, it may not, but without the permission to do so, obviously we won't be doing it. Um, as far as snow removal is concerned, the. <coughs> We were permitted based on leases, and one of them was snow canning area, as you know. Um, to be honest with you, with absolutely no traffic problems in front of us in the past two summers, um, we haven't even had to use the snow canning property. I'm paying a lot of rent for something that is absolutely unnecessary. <laughs> and I know it was considered necessary at the time. Um, the reality of it is that if anyone takes a look, those are a bunch of empty parking spaces because a great deal of my customers walk or bike my bike rack gets a ton of use, and we have the trolley stopping in front of the building. And being that the trolley from Old Orchard Beach is a dollar per ride, and you can go all the way to Camp Ellis and Funtown and the Aquaboggin and Bailey's Lobster Pound for a dollar, um, it's very well used. So the parking that I have is far more than adequate for what I need it for. Um, that being said, part of my seating that um, when I came to the board the very first time to be permitted was indoor seats. And then when I came back, the extra parking that was required of me was because I have a patio, which has 28 people seated. Um, and clearly, if there's snow that's plowable, I'm probably not going to be seating people on the patio. So that kind of changes the parking needs. Um, and we have a couple of spots, right? We, we plowed it last year, even though we weren't open, because we have to have utility trucks pulling in to continue to put oil in the tanks and um, do all these things. And of course, my husband and I do the snow blowing as well because we do work on the building in the winter time. It's not a new building. Um, so we have to keep going in and checking things, make sure everything's all right. So we keep all the porches snow blowed and we do all of this work ourselves. Um, and Henry Pelletier, who owns snow canning, does plow his area as well. So it's plowed. No, the sidewalk is not plowed. Um, I really don't anticipate the need for that because obviously we won't be as busy in the winter as we're in the summer, if at all. Um, so we have some areas. At <coughs> Can you bring the microphone over with you? Just, oh, yeah. just bring it. Yeah. Okay. 
Um, so I don't have a computer with me. I can pass this over to you. But in the corner of our lot, there is one single space that we fit into a corner, and we can plow snow into that area in order to make the spaces down here. We can also push stuff right up until the edge where the bike rack is, which would probably not be used in plowable snow either. So if you want me to pass, if you want me to pass it around, I can. If anyone has any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Um, this is um, this item is available for public comment. Anybody wants to step up and have any say? Okay. Um, Rachel, you want to go? I actually don't have any questions. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I may think of some later, but I don't have any right now. <laughs> she wants to reserve the right to come back around. <laughs> I have a couple simple ones, really. Without the 28 spaces, how many total seats do you have? How 70. Many? 70? Has, and, and how many parkings? I'm just thinking you may have enough, like you said, you may not, may not need. Yeah. I'm trying to avoid some snow blowing for you. Right. You well, the snow canning so. property, I haven't done the math because it was done in the original thing. Yeah. But the, the snow canning property gave me the ability to have the outdoor seats in the second phase okay. of the site plan, of uh, the permission so that you the, guys gave me. <laughs> yeah, and I can't, I, re, I recall this, you know, when you mm -hmm. first got permitted, but I don't have that good a memory, <laughs> but I thought that that was the case in that the seats at the snow can that covered, the parking at the, at the snow yeah. canning covered the seats on the patio. Right. But and I think actually, if we did the math. It actually covered even more than that. Because it's is it one and a half spaces per car, Oh, no, I'm sorry. One space for one and a half cars. Jim L., do you know? The right. restaurant. Um, yeah. What's it off the top? Requirements are very complex. Very complex. <laughs> well, the other thing. All right, let's not do it then. Let's just say. That <laughs> well, no. Yeah, one other thing. Want to I, don't do, I don't want to do. I only got a pencil. I don't have a calculator, so let's. Just, <laughs> but right. also, part of restaurant um, parking has to do with how many employees I have at maximum. Yeah. yeah. And in the summertime, clearly, I have many more employees than I would in right. November, <laughs> so yeah. I would be reducing parking by that as well. So. I'll, I'll commit to checking the math at a later date, <laughs> but I think if I recall <laughs> correctly, when we did this back, um, it was the snow canning covered the patio. In fact, I think it actually more than covered the patio. So, um, and we never know how much snow we're going to get, but you, I am stopping at it the end of depends. December too. The you know the the really the heaviest months January, February, March. We aren't we right. are not uh, requesting at all. Okay. Yeah. I, I, that's all. I think it. I think it works. But. You want to say? That's all. I, all right, Robin. Oh, other than the fact that I've eaten there and it's really good. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry, a little plug. I'm on TV, right? So. <laughs> <laughs> Have the cornbread. <coughs> it's all about the cornbread. Um, picture myself. I haven't been there yet, but if I decide to go after the busy season in October and it's snowing or whatever, I'm going to be honest. If there's not a parking space right up by the place, I'm not going to go to snows and walk up, even if the sideway walks clouds. Um, Call me lazy, but I'm not going to do it. Um, so I guess I would be inclined to ask you to do a snow removal plan for what's in front of your facility. Um, and I know that you sort of went over it here kind of a thing, but if you could work with staff to get that in writing somehow, that way it's, it's in the record, it runs with the land kind of a thing. Um, and I don't necessarily, um, uh, again, I'm going to trust that staff is going to do the math. And once you take away the patio tables, mm -hmm. you're not going to need the snow's parking lot kind of a thing. So that may take away the sidewalk issue. Mm -hmm. Do you see where I'm going with that? Mm -hmm. I do. Are you talking about something that I do at a future meeting with you or? Nope. Oh, this is just that an you administrative. You just handle it with staff. Okay. Like, we're sort of giving staff the direction to close this out with you. And, and that's where I'm going with it. And I think that's where you were going yeah. too, Rick. 
Okay. You said it better though. No. We, I did actually ask if this was an, an administrative approval process, yep. and there was some doubt as to whether I should even be here tonight. Yeah. So <laughs> we, we appreciate you doing it, okay. though. And what we're trying to do is just give staff the mm -hmm. guidance to do that so that you can uh, stay open through December. And I hope it does make, make it more financially feasible for you. Thank you for coming in tonight. Thank you. Just, sure. as, just to put it in the record so there's no kind of question in the future is that um, we talk about not plowing the sidewalk, but also during snow events, uh, the on-street parking, which I'm sure is probably somewhat being utilized for that, is not being is not a priority for public works mm -hmm. as well. As, but as I, I guess what I'm saying is, if there's not a space available, people are just going to move They're on. Keep so going, yeah. I just want to point it out, just so it's in the record somewhere, that it's your number wasn't being relied on those spaces at all, the on-street parking. Like oh, you said, it was your site and snow canning was my understanding, right? Correct. So you're not relying on those spaces. I just no. want to point it out that okay. those weren't part of that. Yeah, and fine. so we're not, we're going to continue to not rely on those. Okay. Um, Correct. Good clarification. I'll say. I just want to make sure that Jamel and Angela have the direction that they need to to finish this administratively. Okay. Okay. Um, I um, I've actually been down there and I, I like it, but I got to tell you the truth. Uh, during the summer, we're reluctant to go down there because it's so crowded. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm glad you're going to be extended. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it, it's kind of interesting because I recall the original discussion about parking and everything and, and you saying that the trolley comes by. Mm -hmm. Now, the trolley, pro I assume the trolley <coughs> may stop working after Oh, Labor yeah. Day. No, that doesn't work in the fall. But so, I, I was talking about our lack of sure, need for yeah. the snow canning property yeah. in the summer. Yeah. yeah. So I, I suspect you'd probably find more people after Labor Day would probably drive there than... Than would be walking our clientele by. definitely changes I mean yeah, we have a lot more yeah. local people yeah. rather than having the people from you know old orchard and mm. so yeah it's, it's a complete shift in yeah. the customers and the demographic of the people we're sure. waiting on now um, I'm kind of curious uh, December 31st did you think about going to January 1st so you could take a <laughs> uh, no <laughs> <laughs> we, we uh, we do. A we want to get we work a lot of then. hours, <laughs> and we need a break. <laughs> I'm just talking about like to one o'clock. Oh, there you go. Oh, AM. Thank you for the suggestion. <laughs> um, no, I th I think uh, I agree with my colleagues. If if you could, you know, we could be assured that there's a, you know, sto uh, snow removal type arrangement. Sure. Um, I'm all set with everything. So we do have a draft motion. And the draft motion is for the garage barbecue at Pine Point operational dates site plan amendment. I move to approve the project entitled Garage Barbecue at Pine Point operational dates proposed by 3 East Grand Avenue LLC as depicted on the plan set prepared by, is it Boisman and Associates? Yes, my civil Okay, general. Boisman and Associates, dated 8-10-18 with the follow following findings and conditions. Uh, findings. Uh, the applicant is proposing to stay open from April 1st through December 31st. The original season of operation is stated on the final plan set dated 5-1-2017, prepared by Northeast Civil Solutions as April 1st through October 31st. The applicant has provided a narrative to serve as a final plan set as an addendum, uh, addendum to the approved plan. The property is located within the town and village center for Town and Village Centers 4, it's TBC 4, Zoning District, and is identified on the Town of Scarborough tax map as map U22, lot 123. The Planning Board has reviewed the application and supporting documentation and finds that the proposed design of the site plan adequately addresses the site plan review and zoning ordinance requirements for site utilization and layout, access, internal vehicular movement, pedestrian ways, landscaping, stormwater management, architectural, signage, utilities, and storage. And there's one condition. Uh, the applicant shall provide a detailed snow storage and removal plan. And this shall be reviewed and approved by the planning department. Second. 
Uh, any further discussion? All those approved? Okay. Thank you very much. All right. Okay, item number 13, um, Maine Life Care Retirement Community requests a site plan amendment to review, uh, site plan amendment review for 15 Piper Road, Assessors Map R101, Lot 5. Well, All right, so this project is located in the RF district and is also in a contract zone at 15 Piper Road. Uh, the applicant's proposing a site plan amendment to add 12 space parking spaces along the westerly edge of the existing parking field on the site. Uh, staff was unable to find any proposed snow storage provisions on the plan. The applicant should discuss these provisions with the board. The applicant has indicated that due to prior wetland fill on the site, uh, this project requires approval by the main DEP. The applicant should update the board on this process. And finally, I'll turn it over to Angela Blanchett, our town engineer, to discuss any stormwater management concerns on the site. Um, I think um, Warren Kern's comments were, were pretty minor. Um, and the only thing that I guess I wanted to highlight for the board was that now this um, site does trigger the 419, which did, the, uh, I believe, about the previous expansion. And um, that project, really the completion of that pond is just recent, but I, um, we need to secure those maintenance agreements because uh, the town does not have that. And so then the, the future um, post-construction inspections that really need to happen before June 1st of each year, that should be happening this fiscal year um, that we're in right now, So, um, which can happen in the spring, but as long as it happens before the June 1st date. So um, that's what staff would like to, if somehow incorporate that in with any kind of approval um, and any motion associated with that would be our recommendation. Um, and then also, I know um, Woodard and Kern has highlighted in previous um, applications as well as this one about concerns about future maintenance when you start talking about elder control structures with small orifices um, that can clog easily if you're on a private site. Um, we're obviously now being in Chapter 419 inspections helps with that, um, but it also is something that we'd like to just kind of look at again, take another look at is there um, a, more, a, a design that's a little more maintenance friendly, I think, um, I guess I'll put it that way. Okay. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. I'm Will Conway, representing Maine Life Care Retirement uh, Communities, which is Piper Shores. On the aerial photograph, um, on the bottom of the page is the ocean. On the top of the page is Spurwink Road. This is Piper Road. It provides access to the main campus, which is here. And uh, many of you may have been there uh, before, but it's a large building, you enter, there's parking, you drive under it, there's more parking, and then there's a, a fan-shaped parking on the perimeter here. And this yellow area is where the parking is uh, proposed. And I would add that um, this is a critical need for Piper Shores. They have, I, I go there for meetings, and it's impossible to find a place to park. So they really have a need for this uh, project. And so moving to the details, so that fan shape that I pointed out before is here. The building is, is down here. This is the current outer edge right here. So we're proposing um, a new row of parking in this location with an access drive so it's interconnected, so it's not dead-end parking. Um, and then. Um, there's a minuscule amount of wetland fill right here. This is a wetland area here. 
There's a couple of small fingers here that uh, by the dimensional requirements will be impacted. And um, I have an email from the Army Corps that I'd like to submit in the records saying that they are all set and that permit will be issued soon. As far as the staff comments, uh, I think we can work with staff. I don't think we have any issues with the comments. Uh, many of them are good. Some of them are no longer applicable. Uh, but I think we can work with staff, and we are requesting your approval of our plan this evening. Okay. Um, this is... Um is public comment available on this item? So if anybody wishes to address the uh, board, this is your time. I guess, okay. Um, Rick, you want to go? You want to ask him? Um, yeah, I mean, the, 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 as long as all the woodwork and car and, um, those minor comments are addressed, and, and Angela is satisfied with the storm water. Um, how many spaces are you adding? Just well, okay. is there is there is there? I'm just wondering, is there is there more expansion proposed in the future, or that you're just thinking these twelve will probably solve the problem? Um, well, we will be back before you. Uh, I can't say when. But there are some areas over here and over here that could be expanded. But much like the um, Alaire folks, the site is subject to a site law, so we're keeping our footprint under 10,000 square feet. Okay. So I, the answer is maybe, but I yeah. don't. And it doesn't has no bearing on this anyway. It was more of a. It's pretty much most of the. It just doesn't seem like that's enough spaces for the for the. I've been over there myself, and there are, it's very yeah. tight. Yeah, it is. And Just curious. They're built out over here. We'll, we'll be uh, coming back to you for the property across the road. Um, but this, this land is encumbered by a conservation easement, most of their site. And there's, this is really the only area approximate to this building where they can add parking. These areas on the other edge of the fan are encumbered by buildings and gardens and utilities and so forth. So okay. this is pretty much it, this area. Yeah. I, I mean, I looked it over. The only real concern was storm water, and it looks like it's pretty minor, so I'm good. Rachel? Yeah, and snow storage goes yeah. where? Yeah, so snow storage will go on either end here and here. We have a retaining wall there with a guardrail on it. So we can't push it there. So it's going to be in these islands and off to the sides. And off to the sides is not anything to do with wetlands. There, it's, no wetlands. Uh, okay. Located. All right. Thank you. Um, how do we know that 12 spaces is enough? Well, we don't. But anything that they can do will alleviate the problem. As I said, you know, they're pretty much maxed out, and they're not going to build anymore. I mean, there's no more building yeah. program on this campus. Yeah, and the reason I ask is just wondering if, if on, you know, our parking space requirements, if, you know, if you're meeting, if, if the you're meeting the parking standards and it's still not enough. Yeah. If it's um, something that we need to look at internally as far as updating. I can tell for you a particular that, use. Let me just speak to that, yep. uh, Robin. So per your ordinance, uh, based on the assisted living here and the independent living here, uh, by your ordinance, there are uh, 234 spaces required. There's currently 358, so more than the requirement, and it's still not enough. And, and that includes, you know, 
for, for employee parking and yeah but the calculation I, I uh, is 250 beds yeah. at one space per three 40 duplex units at two spaces per okay. and then 70 employees at maximum shift at one space per okay. no I, I I'm sure you are doing it correctly I'm just wondering on our end if there's you know something for a particular use we need to increase our our pay parking space allotments kind of thing will so so any information you can share with us you know mm -hmm. on that is it's very much appreciated um, and I thank you for disclosing that there has been prior wetland disturbance so at this point you do have to get um, is it Army Corps and DEP permits? Correct. Yes. Okay. Good. Um, and I saw your email that they're on their way but they're still not in hand yet kind of a thing so I'm sure that'll be a condition of approval that yeah. you know that you, they'll still want to have um, record of the approvals and the like. Bob Green is an AD. I know, and they're so overloaded. It's wonderful. Yeah, yes, um, he is. Absolutely. I asked him for a similar email, but it didn't arrive. But That's okay. Um, he did tell me that he was embarrassed to ask me to file the permit because <laughs> 177 so square feet. But I know. He shouldn't be embarrassed. No. This is Scarborough. Every place is wetland here. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> I guess, how do you propose to address the engineering concern about the small orifice? with the proposed storm. I'll have project. our engineers uh, have a conversation with Angela and um, what are covering. Yeah, and I, I will echo what Angela is saying in the need to have an executed post-construction inspector on hand and... Um, yeah, we would expect that as a condition. Okay. Yeah. And whether it's Sebago Technics or someone else that they have, that's great. But the other thing, do you have any sort of proprietary systems on 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 site that you might need to have a um, like a vector truck on call or anything like? Do you need anything? Yeah, we have porous pavement. Is that's our yeah. Form so you have to have that regenerative air. Per, so do you have that person on retainer or on? Is is that person contracted with Piper Shore? Not yet. Okay. Not yet, because they Good. currently don't have that pavement on the okay. campus. But, but if you could provide that to the town as well to yep. know who the contractor is, that way if anything happens on site, um, MS4 permit requirements are just getting more and more rigorous, so any information you can provide to the town on, on that front is, is very much appreciated as far as Chapter 419 is concerned for the long-term maintenance of stormwater management. Yep. Um, thank you so much. Um, uh, let's see, and, and yeah, if, if when your engineer talks with Angela, just address the Woodard and Curran concerns about the hydrocad and all that kind of a thing, Will, but um, I think, you know, the, probably the draft motion that you, I don't know if you've been given a copy of it yet, um, uh, you know, I, I, it all seems very, like you, you all can take care of this administratively. I haven't seen the motion. Okay. Well, it will be provided to you. And just, um, and, and you already talked about where snow storage is going to go. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then I think all my questions are, um, so, and just to be sure when we talk about the post construction inspections, it's not just, it's, you know, it's for the, is it for the entire site that we're looking for? Um, no, what triggered it was they modified the pond with okay. the last expansion, last building. So it would be the pond that they modified as well as this system, which is the forest okay. pavement. Okay. Oh, that reminds me of one other question. If the current um, space right now that you're going to turn into parking spaces is in a conservation easement? Is oh, there no. A, no, it's not. No. Okay, I thought you had said it was encumbered as part it of is, the conservation easement. It is, but this area here is not within it. Okay. Okay, I just thought that was going to be a lot of legal issue, but good. It's all taken care of. I'm all set, Mr. Chair. Okay. <laughs> um, I have no further questions, and I do have a draft motion, um, assuming no uh, board members have anything else. Um, I have a draft motion for the Maine Life Care Retirement Community, Inc., a site plan amendment. I move to approve the project entitled, uh, titled 2018 Parking Expansion proposed by Maine Life Care Retirement Community, Inc., as depicted on the plan set prepared by Sebago 
Technics dated 8618 with the following findings and conditions. Findings. The applicant is proposing to add 12 parking spaces along the westerly edge of the existing parking field. The property is located within the rural farming district and a contract zone and is identified on the Town of Scarborough tax maps as map R101, lot 5. The planning board has reviewed the application and supporting documentation and finds that the proposed design of the site plan adequately addresses the site plan review and zoning ordinance requirements for site utilization and layout, access internal vehicular movement, parking, pedestrian ways, landscaping, stormwater management, lighting, architecture, utilities, and storage. And the conditions are, number one, prior to the start of construction, the plan set shall be revised to include A, an overall site plan, B, an addition of sto uh, snow storage provisions. <coughs> C, the addition of a wooden guardrail as noted on the staff review comments memo dated 8-27-18. A stamped plan by a professional engineer. The standard plan note in indicating that the standards within chapter 419 post construction stormwater infrastructure management ordinance applied to this project. These revisions shall be reviewed and approved by the planning department. Condition number two, prior to the start of construction, the applicant shall A, submit approval by the Maine Department of Environmental Protection, B, delineate and demarcate the border of the conservation easement on the property, and C, execute and record the maintenance agreement as required by the post-construction stormwater infrastructure management ordinance. Condition number three, prior to the start of construction, the applicant shall address the comments of Woodard and Curran's peer review memo dated 8-23-18. And condition number four, prior to the start of construction, a pre-construction meeting is required. The meeting shall, be, shall include appropriate town staff, the developer, and their site contractor, and is to be coordinated through the planning department. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Four. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, now item number fourteen was tabled. And number fifteen, item fifteen is Mazonian Development, LLC, requests a preliminary subdivision review for 28 Burnham Road, assesses map R1, lot 10. All right, we made it. Uh, so this project's located in the RF and I-4 protection overlay districts at 28 Burnham Road, as a, the applicant's proposing a 20-lot conservation subdivision. They were last before the board in March for a sketch plan review. And as the board knows, one of the primary purposes of a conservation subdivision design is to avoid impacts to the town's natural resources. It appears that in order to access lots one through three, wetlands will be impacted. Uh, staff has suggested that the applicant consider eliminating these said lots in order to reduce uh, wetland impacts on the site. In accordance with the zoning standards, in order for an open space area to be counted towards the 50% requirement, an open space area must include a minimum wetland buffer of 25 feet from the upland edge of a wetland to any building lot boundary. It appears that several areas throughout the proposed subdivision do not meet this standard, so the board should be sure to discuss this with the applicant. The applicant completed a wetland and vernal pool assessment in May 2018. Uh, staff, per usual, staff seeks the board's input related to conducting a peer review of the wetland delineation and vernal pool determination. The applicant has indicated they have coordinated with the Scarborough Land Trust in regards to conveyance of the open space that abuts uh, their property. The applicant should provide the board with an update on this process and which portions of the open space are proposed to be conveyed to the Land Trust. And there appears to be a limited area for the proposed well placement locations on several lots on the plan, so the applicant should discuss these proposed locations in regards to the proximity of the proposed roadway. And that's what I have for you, Mr. Chair. Okay. Any applicant? Hi, uh, Steve Blake with BH2M representing Mazoyan Development. 
Um, so this is, uh, the project's called Ridgewood Farm. It's a 20-lot conservation subdivision. Um, as Jamel mentioned, we were here for a sketch plan back in March. So, um, and I can get into some of the comments that Jamel mentioned, but just to give you a brief overview, um, the, the project includes new construction of um, public, or what are going to be designed and built to a public road standard. It's about 3,000 feet of road. Um, <coughs> it, the, uh, the project area is about 51 acres. Uh, so the plan that I have uh, up right now is sheet 1B in the plan set. It kind of gives like a good overall of um, which parcels are to be, or the, the portion of the, the Pottles overall parcel, which is, is to be part of the subdivision. Um, so it's, it's about 51 acres, uh, 29 of those would be conserved as open space. Um, and as Jamel mentioned, we've had discussions with the Scarborough Land Trust. Um, the, the last time that we spoke, we kind of left it that we would kind of work through the preliminary subdivision process before we, um, before we went any further. But there's interest from both the land trust and also the applicant from, from that approach. Um, in addition to the subdivision permits, there's also, uh, we're also filing a site law permit with DEP and a, and a NERPA tier one permit. Um, for utilities, there, there aren't any public facilities out in this area, so everything will be on a private domestic well and private uh, subsurface disposal systems. Um, to get into a couple of the comments, um, I think the, the the wetland comment, maybe I'll tackle that first. Uh, so when we, we looked at a few different options for um, kind of how to get access into the site, um, there are two wetland crossings um, that, that have to be <coughs> crossed to access the, the upland parts of the site. And the way, that we, the way that we looked at that was to kind of target the narrowest, the narrowest spot in those wetlands rather than push that further south um, further south where the wetlands were wider. If we, if we, if we did that, we would, we would be able to avoid the lots one, two, and three driveway impacts, um, but it would, it would create more impacts from the main road crossing. Uh, so that's why we kind of took the approach that we did. <coughs> um, the open space, um, the 25-foot setback, uh, we understand that we have some excess open space, uh, about three acres. Um, so we can revise our calculations to um, deduct those areas that don't have the 25 foot setback, but we still have uh, more than 50%, which is what's required. <coughs> um, and I know there were, I know Woodward and Curran had some stormwater comments as well that we can address. Uh, we just received the comments late last week, so I haven't had time to prepare a formal response to everything. Um, but I think most, most we can address fairly simply. So, thank you. Okay, this, um, this item is um, open for public comment, if anybody would like to comment. Time's up. <laughs> Please state your name and address. Hi, Sue Ann Snell. I live at 14 Burnham Road. So I'm the property that will be impacted on two sides by this. Um, I have um, a lot of concerns. I think my biggest concern is the wetlands, and one of them is how it's going to impact the water table and how it's going to impact my water table, especially where I have two wells. Um, that's one of my concerns. Also my concern is really kind of looking at the big picture and how is this going to impact the town of Scarborough over time. We've sat here this evening and, and we've had a lot of discussion in regards to Scarborough Downs. And so my question to the, to the board is, does the town really support another development? Um, and are people going to be drawn to this part of, air, to, of um, Scarborough knowing that there's going to be this huge development that's going to be done at Scarborough Downs. Other is, how is it going to impact our schools? How is it going to impact our roads? Is the town of Scarborough prepared to be able to maintain the road in this development in regards to snow removal and other maintenance? I'd 
My other concern, excuse me, is um, is the amount of traffic on Burnham Road, and how is that going to impact um, that infrastructure? Um, that's a heavily traveled road, um, and there are a lot of issues in regards to people speeding on that road. And so how is that going to impact um, the area? So those are just some of my concerns that I have. Before you go, where, where do you live? I live at 14 Burnham Road. Where, where do you live in conjunction with this? Anybody, anybody else? My name is, my name is Barry Bartlett. I live at 36 Hanson Road. I am on a butter to uh, this development. And uh, as she very well stated, there are a lot of issues I think that this development brings forward. We've sat and we've listened the entire evening how uh, Scarborough is developing on the south side of 95. Uh, years ago, and I've been living in my house at 36 Hanson Road for 20 years. Uh, years ago, the town of Scarborough, along with the federal government, purchased land in the area from land trust to have open land. And now we're going to allow a 20 lot subdivision to come in, and my understanding is that's only going to be phase one. Phase two is going to be later on down the road. Uh, we hear the possibility of more houses coming in on this 88 acre piece that was sold. Now, part of the thing is, is where I live at 36 Hanson Road, we have Silver Brook that runs directly behind our house. Within 100 feet, they plan on putting in lots 12, 13, I think it is 11, 12, 13, right behind my house and Ken Acker's house. Every year for the past 20 years, I've watched Silverbrook overflow during the springtime. Now you're going to bring in storm drains on 20 houses, which are all going to be draining downhill towards Silverbrook, and we're going to have constant flooding down there. There's enough flooding right now with just the snow. Once you remove all of the trees that are up on the side hill, you pave it, all that snow is going to be pushed somewhere, and we had a whole long discussion here tonight many times about snow removal, what's going to happen with the snow, storm drain, so on and so forth, and here we are with the 20 lot subdivision, and everything is going to be coming. There's quite a pitch on that property. If you folks have ever been out there, it comes downhill quite heavily right towards the brook. That brook is going to be overflowed constantly due to the subdivision going in there. It is going to aesthetically ruin what you folks have spent thousands and thousands of taxpayer dollars to buy open land. Now you're going to put a subdivision in right next to the Ben Acker Trail that I personally and the Ackers personally take care of. We maintain. I mow back there. We clear that. We keep that for people who live on the south side of 95 here to have a nice open place to go. And now you're gonna bring in subdivisions, and I think I speak for some of the other people here, this is quite enraging for us to see this come in. I think it, 20 houses is way too much. I think the land cannot sustain it, and that has nothing to do with the wildlife that's back there. I've hunted back there for years. There are all kinds of bats, owls, deer, turkeys, so on and so forth. Now, the conservation land that we've spent millions of dollars and invested money in so that we can have open land is now going to be crowded out. All those animals are going to be crowded out of there, and you're going to be cutting down a lot of the woods that are in there. That's all I have right now uh, for stuff on this. I just think that this really needs to be rethought, and certainly these houses and house lots cannot be so close to Silverbrook. Even 100 feet is way too close. They need to be much further up on top of the hill. There is a ridge back there, and it needs to be up on the top of it, not down along the sides where they put the development. Thank you. Thank you.
I'm Elizabeth Bartlett. I live at 36 Hanson Road. Um, I have a lot of concerns, um, many of which my husband addressed. One of my big concerns is traffic, which Sue Snell has also addressed. We've lived there for 20 years. We moved there for the reason of being in a rural area. And I'm sure all my neighbors live there for the same reason. This 20 home lot is going to be what's called cluster homes. They're gonna sit one on top of the other. Right now we all have two acres or more where we live. So we're all spread out. Um, we didn't see the original plans when the informal meeting was given to us um, a week ago tonight. And the seller, Malcolm Pottle, seemed confused as to why we didn't see the original plans. We saw this plan. Uh, phase two was shut down and not discussed, even though um, there is rumors that there is going to be a phase two eventually. So that's very concerning. So that means, what, another 20 houses, so a, a total of maybe 40 houses. The traffic on Burnham Road is crazy. It's as bad as Broad Turn Road. The traffic on Hanson Road, I have people passing each other in front of my house on a daily basis, like it's a raceway. You figure 20 homes, two cars each house, that's another 40 cars in the neighborhood. Broad Turn Farm has issues. Their farm dog was killed this past summer. Someone hit it on Broad Turn Road and killed it because of driving too fast. They've also paved Broad Turn Road, so now people drive even faster because it's nice and smooth and pass each other. Um, John Bliss, the farmer, was sitting on his tractor. He was hit from behind. Luckily, he wasn't um, injured, but again, driver in attention, driving too fast. So bringing more homes like this out there is a huge concern traffic-wise because these people are going to be in the neighborhood and they're going to be you know, going back and forth to work. And, Living out where we live, one of the things, if you work in Portland or even work on the other side of Scarborough, you have to plan a good amount of time when you leave in the morning. And when you come home in the evening, you're not going to get home so quick because you're just sitting in traffic. Um, we have... We all have wells. Our well is already contaminated with arsenic. It has been since we lived there, so we have to get our water from outside sources. Um, I don't know how all of this is going to impact our well water. It, you know, is it going to dry up our well because now they've drilled for so many wells? Um, septic systems, all these houses are going to have all these septics, 20 more septic systems right behind our house. It's, it's just, it's very, very concerning. I understand, you know, growth has to happen, but this development does not belong. It's not a good fit in our neck of the woods. It's a cluster development. This is something you'd see in Portland, perhaps the other side of Scarborough. I could see maybe five houses, 10 at the very most, but 20 houses, it's, it's just, it's way too much. And the concerns, it's, it's, it's I was shocked. I, I knew nothing about this until last week. It, we were just blindsided that this was even in progress of, of um, being built eventually. And I hope that, I asked last week, has a traffic study been done? And I was told to ask that question here tonight at this meeting. Um, but I just wanted to vo voice my concerns, and I feel I speak for most of our neighbors here, and there's a lot of neighbors that didn't show up. I don't know. That's another thing. Some were informed. Some weren't informed. Informed word of mouth, by letter. It's just all very confusing. Just a lot of information, and a lot of information I don't feel we are being given. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? <clears throat> My name is Ken Acker. I live at 40 Hanson Road in Scarborough, next door to the Bartlett's. Um, I guess they, they've basically said everything that I was going to say. I just want to emphasize 
um, there is quite a slope on that hill heading right towards the brook. And with additional drainage from those houses, I, I'm really nervous about that. We do drain, I mean, we do flood every single spring. Um, and when I moved in there 25 years ago, that water was fairly um, polluted. It was pretty nasty coming through there. And over the years, we've been able to clean it up. Um, and I'm afraid that that's going to go right back the way it was if there's drainage coming down over that hill. Um, the, the comment about the clusters, I do think that when we moved in, there was a two acre lot minimum in order to move out there. There was even discussion at one point of making it five acre minimum lots um, out there in that area. Um, to, to take it from that kind of a discussion and, and a comprehensive plan that specifically did not include a great deal of development out in the western side of Scarborough, to have um, this kind of thing going on just seems like it's kind of out of place compared to what has been discussed in the past. And finally, I guess, I think about the traffic. The roads out there are getting busier and busier, not just with Scarborough traffic, but everybody coming from Buxton, Hollis, all the outer towns. Those roads out there were just not made for that kind of traffic. And to add 20 more houses um, and that kind of uh, um, additional traffic going through just seems kind of ridiculous for that area. And I don't think it can support it. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Anybody else? I'm Rhoda Libby. I live at 43 Tapley Road. We own the farm. We own the big field that's across on Tapley Road. Um, we have lived there all of our married life of 48 years. My husband has lived there his entire life. This was the farm. We came here tonight, basically, because our daughter wants to put a house in, one house. And it was amazing, the go around that we have to get a house in, and yet you're gonna put 20 houses in so close to Silverbrook that it's abnormally congested as it is. So I'm just asking you to really think about this development. We're trying to keep our land out of butts to the Broad Turn Farm. We aren't with the land trust. We pay our taxes every six months, and we haven't missed in years. And yet, you want to put, take away some open land that's very little that's left in the town of Scarborough and put in a housing development. I don't think it's right. That's all I have to say, thanks. Can you repeat your name, please? I'm Rhoda Libby. Thank you. My husband is Roland. Thank you. Uh, anyone else? Sure. My name is Brad Gorham, 8 Chopper John Road. And it's also Philip Gorm's my legal name. So my boys and I have uh, enjoyed the benefits of Broadturn Farm and all that land back there. Um, I'd say over the last 10 years, we've spent hundreds of hours back there. It's absolutely a gem of the conservation land that I've seen in this town. And uh, I'm opposed to this development. I think we need to take a hard look at the effects that all these houses would have on Broadturn Farm. I think they'll be, certainly won't be beneficial, There'll be significant and deleterious effects we can't even anticipate. And I would encourage the board to uh, have somebody look very closely at that. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? I'll give one last one. Uh, my name is Joe Sturdivant. I'm at 11 Trapper John Road. I'm not going to repeat everything they say, but I'm in like solid agreement with it. Uh, and I do oppose this. And you know, on behalf of the potential buyers of these properties, I have questions about uh, the document we received or that was part of the agenda speaks to that there's about six acres of wetlands there already. I don't know where that falls on this picture or not. 
Um, and they talk about only 7,100 square feet being impacted by the road, but then I see a bunch of people's property has it. So just, I don't know what the disclosure process is when somebody buys a new house in a development like this, but are we doing a service to those people? Are we creating future problems for them as well in buying a house that's sitting on a swamp, basically? So, and also to everybody else's point, all the new surface water and uh, septic systems and all that, how does that fit in when you're so close together in an area that is already extremely wet? So those are just my thoughts too. Okay. But. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay, I'll close the public comment section. Um, I appreciate, uh, we appreciate your comments. Uh, I just wanna make a, just, just a um, acknowledgement that um, I want to remind the public that the applicant is proposing this subdivision. It's not the board. We're just here to review what what they want to do. So, um, who wants to go first? Robin. <laughs> Steve, how are you doing? Good, how's it going? Good. Can you help me um, see where the wetland impacts are? I have a black and white copy. Yeah. And um, what, what figure should I, I be looking at in our plan set to see the wetlands best? Um, I would say either sheet one or sheet three, I believe. Sheet three looks like a road section to me, but um, I'm thinking one or one A. Yeah. yeah, if you want to see an overall, it's one would be the best. Okay. Uh, they do. I mean, if you want to see it with the topography it is on the plan and profile sheets, and that would be on sheet three. And, so I'm able to see uh, what the acceptable well placement areas are as far as the hashing or is concerned on my copy, but uh, wetland impacts it looks blank. So I, I, it is hard to see where where they are. Um, so, do you have a little? I don't, but I can point them out up here. <laughs> so, go to these hashed areas. There's the, there's one here for the main road, or two here for the main road. Right on. And then the driveways. So we've got stacked driveways for lots one and two. Okay. And then an individual driveway for lot three. Mm -hmm. um, so the wetland the wetland impacts. Um, are about 7,100 square feet. There's uh, about five acres of wetlands on the parcel. Um, and the, the three driveway impacts that we were talking about before amount to about 700 square feet. Okay. Um, what, um, what's the average lot size here? I think the, sm the smallest lot is probably 33,000 square feet, and then there are a couple that are 50, somewhere in that range, 50,000 square feet. What percentage of the open space is wetlands? Um, Just a rough, I'm not going to hold it too much. Yeah, probably about, um, ten percent maybe. Okay. So, can you point me to like where you have a table that shows all, like, you know, where you have it all listed, where it says, you know, open space is this. And sheet one. Ones are that. It's in, it's in the notes in sheet one. Sheet one, okay. Yep. So, note 30 shows the calculation for Thanks. open space. Sorry, I didn't bring my readers. Yeah, it's a little bit hard on the 11 by 17. It is. So how much open space then do we have, Steve? It's about 29 acres. 29 acres. And you're saying 10% of it is? It's closer to 15. It's closer yeah. to 50. Yeah, Fif five over 15, sorry. One five. One five, yep. Okay. And on sheet one, the upper, I'm gonna say the upper left-hand corner, so north, is where Silverbrook is, correct? Right. Yep. Okay. And you're honoring a 100-foot setback there. 
Um, is any of the open space going to be put into a conservation easement? Well, that, that's the discussion that we're having with, with the land trust. Um, so, I mean, there's a high potential that that, that land will be donated to the okay. trust. So talk to us about how you're going to mitigate the flooding, the potential flooding implications of this added aggregate impervious area from the homes and the driveways <coughs> and, the, and sure. the roadways. Yeah, so, so one of the things that we have to do both at the local level and with the state is, is permit the, uh, the, the approach to stormwater. Um, so as, as part of the project, we have some stormwater BMPs. So we have two, two wet ponds. Um, we have an underdrain filter up near the main road entrance. Um, and then a number of um, buffers kind of on the downhill side of, of several of the lots. And what, are those vegetated buffers or wooded buffers? They would be deed-restricted wooded buffers. Right on. Um, that, by the way, is the best, you know, it, as far as DEP is concerned and the BMPs that we have available to us, forested buffers are the best stormwater. They provide the best treatment and um, water quality and, um, sorry, quantity control. So... Can you give us a rough idea of where that wooded um, buffer w is proposed, Steve? It's in a few places, okay. but the, the majority of those buffers are on the back sides of lots 6 through 12, kind of in that area where Silver Brook is. 6 through 12, okay. So the, the other thing I would say about that, that area by Silver Brook is the, the, the way the road is designed, the road is kind of designed along the knoll, so it's, it's kind of at that high point. Um, and, and the lots would be graded in such a way that uh, the front half, so the driveway and kind of the front half of the house would, would drain to the street and then to, to a wet pond where it gets detention and then is released. So that seems counter against the grade of the land because, correct me if I'm wrong, but does the grade of the land want to go back towards Silverbrook? So, so lot 6 through 12 would actually be sort of super elevated and then pitched to the road? It would be, it would be partially filled to, to match where the road grades are. I mean, there will be, uh, you know, a, there's a certain amount of cut and fills that we'll have to do for the road. So, um, so the back half of the lot would kind of honor that, that same topography that goes towards Silver Brook. Mm -hmm. uh, the front half would go towards the pond. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's the piece where... Um, we, kind of, we kind of have to have everything go to a pond to, to meet the, the pre and post requirements. For, okay, so you permit. can't do any, um, oh, what's the word? It's late. I'm trying to think. No, of, I feel the same way. Uh, <laughs> you can't do any sort of like um, intermittent sort of be, uh, best management practices to control it at the source instead of having it you know, be <clears throat> compounded down the road yeah, into one big local. We've tried to do that with the buffers where we can. Okay. Um, you know, along, along the backs or the sides of the lots. We yep. also have, we have a level spreader and a buffer up by Burnham Road as well. Okay. So can you, can you potentially use all of the backside of 6 through 12 as wooded buffer? That's what we're proposing. The whole thing? Yes. It would stay wooded buffer? Yep. Okay. So... If you were to spread that out, like all of those, how many did you say? 29 acres of open space? Is yeah. that what you said? Yep. Okay. Over 20 and then 20 lots. So that's that's where they're getting, where, where this area, I, I'm trying to do the, the, the correlation between the rest of the neighborhood has a two acre lot minimum. And so... Basically, that's accounting for the fact that we have lots here that are less than one acre, correct? Yes. Do you see what I'm saying? Yep. Kind of a thing? Sure. Okay, some of the other issues that we heard is about wildlife, um, you know, sort of breaking up the contiguous uh, habitat and things like that that we have in this wonderful part of town. So has there been any interagency consultation as to whether or not there's eastern bats or New England cottontails? Yeah, so um, there's been a review by IF&W. Um, there will be um, a more detailed review as part of the site law yep. permit. Okay. Um, and because we're impacting wetlands, there we also filed an NRPA Tier 1 Perfect. permit, um, which will be reviewed by the Army Corps of Engineers and also U.S. Fish for the presence of bats. Okay. Um, the preliminary reviews that we got from IF&W, 
Um, we're just, they want us to respect the 100 foot stream setback. Um, and then we have to do some uh, permitting for the Northern Long Eared Bat, which will happen as part of the NRPA process. And have you looked at beginning with habitat maps to see if there are any um, breeding grounds or critical um, habitat? I believe that's what IFNW did as okay. part of their preliminary okay. review. So you're relying on IFNW yeah, for that? Yeah. Okay. Um, do you have to meet the flooding standard here? Um, <clears throat> it's since it's a site law permit, um, there you, you do have to meet the flooding standard. There there are provisions for waivers. Um, so I mean, w one of the things that we've done is, um, you know, we've tried to get as much of this to the pond as reasonably possible. The trouble that we usually run into with subdivisions are the, the backs of the lots. Um, if, if we choose to buffer them, it, we're not really, I mean, you, you do get in smaller events, I suppose you could get some reduction in flows by using a buffer, but it's really the, the larger events like the 25 year storm yeah. that doesn't, they don't really have an impact on. Okay. Um, so, you know, right now the plan has buffers. I'll just, you know, just strictly talking about the backs of lot six through 12. Yeah. Um, in a, you know, in a peak event, the backs of those lots, the, you know, they may create a little bit more runoff. The alternative to that is to put in a, some sort of structural system, um, whether it's ditches or catch basins or something, and, and capture that and convey it to the pond. Yeah, have you, have you thought about doing curb and gutter or anything like that in the, the roadway at all? We do have, on one side, we have curb and gutter. Okay, to help sidewalk. direct it to the larger. So, in, right. so it would direct it away from the brook and into the larger, um, what did you call it? Did, is it an underdrain soil filter or just a sedimentation basin? That there are two wet ponds and two one, wet ponds. one filter, yeah. So, so all of the infrastructure is going to one of those BMPs. Okay. Um, and that's to, that's in accordance with or to satisfy the flooding standard that we just right. we sort of just talked about. Yeah. Okay. So um, I'm, I'm trying to hit on a lot of the concerns sure. that we heard here. Um, traffic, when we talk about traffic, and if you know any of my other colleagues wanna play along, let me know, but it um, sounds like traffic, we might have an issue as far as sight lines and that there's some clearance that's gonna need to be made on each side of the road. Correct me if I'm wrong, Steve. Is that the developer's responsibility, or? Yeah, I mean there are so, so the speed limit out there is 35. Um, so for a 35 mile an hour zone, you need at least at least 305 feet of sight distance. Um, I know I think Bill Bray did the peer review on the traffic, and he recommended at least some limbing um, along the kind of along the north side of our property along Burnham Road, right? Just to improve that sight distance. But that that was the only recommendation he had. Okay. And, and again, that is the cost that the developer bears Correct. to, to yeah. do that. Yeah. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I have to say, um, we're talking about an aquifer overlay district here. So my biggest concern is septic and well being so close together. Um, have you already done your geotechnical, I'm sorry, or whatever analysis you need to do to evaluate? Yes, there's the, a, yep, there a nitrate study that was done. Okay. So that's where there are plumes on the, on the subdivision plan and that's where the well locations were generated from. Okay. Um, and that's to meet the aquifer overlay yes. district requirement. Yep. Okay. Yeah, and the other the other thing I would say about capacity of water is that that's another thing capacity for the domestic wells. That's another thing that DEP will review as part of the site law. Okay. Um, I'm just looking at the aquifer protection overlay district where it, where it does say that any property owner applicant proposing to install a subsurface wastewater disposal system um, that uses one or more septic tanks with a combined capacity more than 1,250 gallons uh, per day, and you know, must do the nitrate concentration in the groundwater study. So that's what you're talking about that, that right. you've done. So you've met that standard and nothing exceeds the five milligrams per liter. Uh, yeah, but it's, I, I believe they used the 10 milligram um, because I think that section of the ordinance, I believe is only if it's a combined system, not individual. Staff, can you help me out? 
um, must demonstrate that nitrate concentrations in the groundwater will not exceed five. Oh, t 10 is the state standard. Um, I know we, we didn't do that study. There was another consultant that did it, but we talked about that specifically um, and determined that that was that language was geared towards a larger system that would serve multiple properties. Okay. Is meeting five milligrams going to be a problem? If, uh, if it is required, <clears throat> if it is applicable? Um, I don't know. I would, okay. I would have to okay. find that out. Um, remind me again, this is just preliminary site Correct. plan. Okay. Subdivision. Subdivision. Thank you. And can, can I ask a clarifying yeah. question? Um, you had mentioned, you just said about the aquifer um, being reviewed by DEP, but this is through site law through the town. Correct? It's not, because we're not in a growth area. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. I noticed that too, that you had said that you did a site law. NERPA, the whole thing with DEP, and I was wondering why the town wasn't doing it, so thank you for, for clarifying. Um, so we talked about the disparity in the neighborhood for folks having two acres versus this having one acre, and we talked about why, because there's open space, there's 29 acres, and that's gonna be deeded um, forested buffer, which is probably the best um, stormwater protection um, going. Um, it's mother nature. We've talked about um, aggregate effects as far as the impervious areas concerned and avoiding flooding issues with the, um, the infrastructure that you have proposed. Um, so I'm hearing that the still, there's some questions about um, the septic, you know, you're gonna work through that. Um, I'm trying to see what else. We talked about traffic. Um, well, is this a place where they may have to pay a school impact fee or a, we, they will have to pay a traffic impact fee, mm -hmm. but what about schools? Do schools apply to school impact fees? I think that there is a town school impact fee per mm -hmm. lot or <coughs> dwelling unit that's applied at building permit. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's $5,000 per house. Per house. Okay. So... The school impact there, so there's a fee structure associated with a addressing that concern. Um, I'm, let me just look to see if any of my, make sure all my questions have been asked. Um, my questions that I had were on safeguards to the aquifer protection overlay um, with respect to separating wells and septic. Um, do you have any comments on that or we're still awaiting? Do you know what I'm getting at here as far as, you know, you don't want to poop where you eat? Yeah, I mean, I, 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 mean, I, <laughs> I do. I mean, I think we've, I think we've done this, the studies that we can do. Um, I mean, it's, it's, it's reflected on the plan. Um, you know, there's, from a permitting perspective, um, there's, there's adequate space for, for septic and, and a private well on, on, each, on each parcel. Mm -hmm. So you are going to go private well and septic for there's not going to be a, a common system no no on any of this yeah and we're very far away from mun uh, not municipal but but um well, we don't have sewer. there's no sewer or water service out in that area okay the only other concern that i had steve that i had noticed here that we haven't covered is basically um when you talk with um, the town engineer and develop the specific, you know, grading plan and the like, um, please consider where the contractor will put lay down areas, um, because we're in an aquifer over, or, uh, aquifer overlay district, um, where the contractor uses their equipment that may have uh, diesel leaks, hydraulic line breaks, that type of thing. That type of thing really should be identified ahead of time so that there can be spill controls in place um, uh, to make sure that there's drip pans and, you know, spill controls on site so that there aren't, so there isn't any contamination of the aquifer. Yep, um, sure. Okay. And also, because that lay down area is also part of the disturbed area or the, um, that, that goes into your, um, 
triggers for the site law in stormwater and the like, because that's considered disturbed area when you put the lay down area down. Yeah, and I know working with this particular developer, usually one of his lots is, re is reserved for that. For that, yeah. okay. And maybe if that didn't have wetlands on it, that would be good. <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah. So most, of, most of them don't. It's really just lots one, two, and three that have wetlands on, on the actual parcel. Got it. And you said you are going to make the road meet town standards? Yes. Okay. <coughs> the Inquisition's over. I think I'm done. Thank you, Steve, for your patience. Yeah, no problem. Rachel? Yeah, as a matter of curiosity, mm -hmm. was the Trapper John development a conservation development? Do you know? I don't know. Um, just looking at it um, from a planning view, it, it looks like it probably was, yeah, and there's good. there's open space around it, but I, I don't know that for sure. Okay. Uh, and what's the difference in height between the, the end of, let's say, Lot 10 and Silver Brook? I know that I'm looking for the... The elevation The, the elevation, I, and I can't really find... Elevations. Last page. Last page. Uh, the top. Yeah. Right here. Uh, second last page, right? So it's hard to look closer yeah. to the lines that are together than Steve. Yeah, well, I, I, I'd like him to answer. It oh, takes, no, since I can't figure yeah. it out. Yeah, I know it's pretty, pretty um, I'm approximating, but I would say 25 to 30 feet, somewhere around there. So, as you put in the septic, that's going to go, that's going to be in the flat area before you start, before the slope starts? Yeah, up on the, the developed portion of the, of the lot, yeah. Okay. Well, as I as I look at this, I just don't see a lot of a lot of space for. I I, I I will be interested in seeing where you're proposing the well placement. I notice a couple of uh, you, the dotted areas of the well placement areas, according to um, sheet one. Yeah, so I and, guess... And, and some of those are right next to wet, wetlands. Um, which ones are you talking about? Lot three. On lot three. Lot two. Um, yep, so that, that would be where the, where the setback is adequate from the uh, disposal system. Um, and they are, they're, they're uh, I guess, along those wetlands, but I would say that area probably extends... Um, 40 to 50 feet from where that wetland is. It's going to be interesting to see how you manage to site the houses mm -hmm. and where the driveways are going to go. We show where the driveways are going to go for, for those lots. Um, we, we show those on the, um, on the plan and profile. So we would we would we would cr we would cross the wetland at the narrowest point for all three of those lots, and then the house would be set back from the wetland, um, kind of centered in those lots. And then the well would be closer to the wetland. Well, the well would be in front, and the septic would be in back. Except for lot one, which would have to be reversed. Uh, nope, lot one is the same situation. Well, you have the acceptable well placement area to the rear, so that's instead where you're saying you're going to put it's, septic. There's some in the front as well. Well, I think it's a very difficult site, so I'd like to, I'm interested in seeing how you're going to handle it. You all set? Yeah, all set. Uh, excuse me, I do, I do want to uh, emphasize what my colleague said. Um, also, I'm concerned about uh, what IFW actually looked at. If, uh, according to the testimony we have, there are um, a lot of uh, wildlife back there. When did IFW take a look? 
Uh, I was in the spring, May, maybe, somewhere around then. What exactly did they do? They, they do an office level review. Um, and then as- Which, as, which as, means? <clears throat> so, so they have um, uh, a catalog, I guess, for lack of a better word. It's called be the beginning with habitat maps. Um, and it, it, at that point, um, we were asking for, I'll call it a preliminary review, because um, that's one of the things that's required as part of the town's uh, subdivision process. Um, this is a site law project with DEP, so DEP will take the application materials that we give to them, um, and they'll distribute them to IFNW, the Army Corps of Engineers, and also U.S. Fish and Wildlife. Um, so so each, each, each one of those programs will have an opportunity to review the project for any, any sort of, uh, any potential environmental impacts. But they just do a book review. They don't actually look at the site? Um, I, I don't know. Each, each project is, is a little bit different. I mean, I, I think if they, um, if they think something warrants a field review, then I'm sure they would probably do that. Well, I suspect that this does warrant a field review. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I can't answer that, but it, it, will, it will come out as part of the permitting process, mm -hmm. certainly. Right, thank you. You're welcome. Rick. Okay. Um, you know, there's a lot of public. I appreciate you coming out, and, and, and it definitely, you know, influences us in that when we hear from the public, I think we always try to make sure that all the rules are being followed. Um, but that's basically what we're here for, to make sure the rules are being followed. Um, so this 20 watts does look like a lot of houses on that land. Um, but I'm looking at Trapper John Road and that parcel, and I count 20 on that too. Um, but the topography of this land and the proximity of that stream does warrant some concern. Um, I've got the study from SME that says that there's. Um, Plenty of room on each lot for the for the wells to be a hundred feet from the septic systems, but you know you really want to. It's on it. It's in a, and it's on, on an aquifer overlay zone too, so we're going to make sure that all those rules are followed. Um, you know, I have a big lot next to my house too, and I and I. I understand your concern, and I understand your your job. Um, the The idea behind oh, IF and W for everybody that doesn't know, because I had to figure it out, stands for Inland Fish and Wildlife, right? Mm -hmm. There you go. Um, the idea behind it, when you move into an RF zone, you think everybody's going to have two acres. I mean, that's what I thought for years before I sat over here, and then on one of the first projects that they presented, um, I realized the lots were nowhere close to two acres. But it's a 51 acre lot. So the idea behind the conservation subdivision is they have to have at least two acres on the lot after they subtract out wetlands in order to put in the number of houses that they propose to put in. It still seems like a lot of houses. And I still can't find a rule that says you can't do it. Um, I got the traffic study uh, and the impact fees. I've been down Burnham Road before, and it is, people don't tend to go 35 on that road. So, you know, I would. Propose that maybe as you move forward in the process, you know, we try to see what we can do for lighting at the end of that road. I don't know how much that will help, but I know that lighting does help 
or at least in my mind it helps. Um, do you know, um, are you going to put any, are there any walking paths and anything through here or any of those proposed at all? Are you thinking about that or? We, there, there, are, there are sidewalks proposed, if that's what you yeah. mean. Are you talking about the open space? Yeah. Um, well, I mean, the open space, we're, you know, we're talking to the land trust. So the, the open space that we're proposing is passive. Um, the land trust may choose to uh, continue, their, continue their trails or blaze some trails through that area. Yeah. Um, but as part of the project, no, we're just proposing it as, uh, you know, restricted open space. Okay. Okay. And then... Um, and I think I'll talk to Robin and everybody more about this, but as far as the runoff, I know you said something about maybe putting a ditch between behind 6 through 12 and directing the water to the pond. I mean, are you going to you going to look at that more seriously or are you thinking just buffer there? Well, I mean, I guess I'd like to get some um, feedback from the board and, and also from, from staff about what, what the better approach is. Um, I mean, I know there's, um, I think I've heard a lot of support for the buffer, um, but what the, the buffer doesn't do is help with some of the larger storm events. Yeah. Um, so I, I guess I, I can see advantages um, from, yeah. from, from both sides. Yeah, I'd like to, to see the, the and, best and I would way just, to keep water out of that stream. Yeah, and I mean, I would just, just reiterate that um, all of the infrastructure that's proposed, so, so all the road and the sidewalk, everything kind of within that, that roadway corridor, mm -hmm. all of that is going to a pond where it's, it's going to get detained. Okay. It's the, the areas that, that, are, that are going through the buffers and getting treatment through the buffers are the, the, the back of the house lot, so the, the, the back lawn areas. Right. Okay. I mean, the traffic study, the report from SME regarding the septic tanks and the wells, I mean, all your paperwork's in order. And as far as I see it, it meets all the rules. So, you know, it's hard because here's the thing, and I won't say anything after this, but if a project comes to us and it does meet all the rules, and we deny the project, that doesn't mean it's not going to happen. It, if it's, there's a standards, there's a code book that has all the standards in it, and if they meet all the standards, we can say no, but it doesn't mean it's not going to happen. Right now, all this paperwork is on and it meets the rules, and I don't see anything wrong with it. How's that? Um, Steve, on the, um, I'm kind of curious about the slope of the land from Brenham Road going back. Is it, is it dramatically uh, sloped towards Silver Brook, or is it more plateaued just gradually? Or? It's not all sloped towards, um, sloped towards Silver Brook. There are some um, kind of, there are some low, some low areas like the couple wetland fingers near the main entrance. Um, and then it kind of gradually goes up um, towards the end of our main road. That's kind of the high ground. So, because you had mentioned about um, on your plan was lots, I think like maybe eight through twelve of um, grading that so it's it's graded towards the road. Half of that, half of that lot graded towards the road. Right. Yeah. Um, I'm, I, I guess I'm just wondering, is, is it possible that if this were done properly, would that alleviate some of the problems that's currently affecting? Well, that, I mean, that's kind of what we're trying to do to, um, to alleviate those problems is to, to take that, that area that's, that's kind of currently going to Silverbrook um, and the area that we're developing it, we're, we're sending it to a pond um, just so we can slow down the release of that runoff. Um, I think Robin, Robin touched on a lot of things. I, I, I just want to reiterate what, what Rick said too, is um, you know, we're, our responsibility is to take a look at what's being proposed in front of us and uh, if it meets the zoning and the ordinances and all the other criteria, um, you know, 
we're, we're confronted with this almost every time we have another one, I think, on Mitchell Hill Road just recently where um, the residents were upset because the houses were going to be, you know, clustered together and they had purchased their homes and they were, you know, spread, up, spread apart, you know, on, on large acres. So um, this, is, this is the zoning and, um, you know, I think these people have a right to uh, develop this land if it meets all the, all the criteria. Um, and we can help alleviate some of the problems that uh, that affects the butters, the butters. So, Roger. I don't, I don't think sure. Um, I think one of the things that Jamel asked was for us to weigh in on, um, and correct me if I'm wrong, Jamel, but um, whether or not we need to suggest a wetland and Vernal Pool peer review. Steve, can you remind us when the, the wetland delineation was done? Was it in 2018? It was. It was in the spring. Um, was it during the Vernal Pool <coughs> window? It was. Okay. And, um, okay. I guess I, I know that this this is something that, that the board has been fairly liberal in asking, um, <coughs> asking for is for a peer review. Um, and um, I guess given the... The fact that if if uh, maybe IFMW may not go out or and and I, I want you to understand just like you know engineering peer review it's not to question the quality of work it's just to get an extra set of eyes on there so I guess I would be inclined to to support a wetland and vernal pool peer review for this location that's the one thing I forgot to talk about Roger. Yeah, and where, I mean, I guess where this is, uh, it's an NRPA permit, and that, that's, that's fine if, if that's what the board wants to do. But, you know, DEP will be reviewing the, the wetlands as well, so it's not just at the town level, it's at the state level as well. Okay, any other comments? Anyone else there? I think you got your work cut out for you. Well, I mean, he's here for preliminary subdivision, but it sounds like there may be some... It's up to the board. Do you feel like there's details to be worked out, or are you guys comfortable with the plans? It's a board decision. I think what he's presented for documentation and for a plan yeah. meets the rules. So I, I don't, I think preliminary, I think there's a lot of work to do before we move forward, but I don't know how we, how we, I think there's enough for preliminary. What do you think? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. For preliminary, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's a board motion. Okay. So um, just make a motion to uh, approve the preliminary subdivision review for 28 Brenham Road, <laughs> assesses map R1, lot 10. Any second? Second. No, for, any? Uh, a discussion. Sure. I would just add that, that we do suggest that there be a wetland delineation in Vernal Pool peer review. Okay. Um, if, if that seems appropriate to amend to the motion. And I would like to see a wildlife yeah. habitat review or analysis. Doesn't that get triggered anyway, did you say? With IFW? Yeah, Let's make sure we get permit. Yeah. I mean, if you're going to do a wetland peer review, that could change the, as I understand it, could that change the layout of the lots? So I'm not sure if it's up to the board. But I, don't, I mean, if it changes the, if they find more wetlands, then mm -hmm. lots, lot layouts may change. Mm -hmm. so. As well as there was a question on not having the contiguous open space, correct? So could that move some lots around as well? Yeah. So what does staff recommend that, anything? <laughs> staff just wanted to point that out, that mm. the layout could be changed based on several things that need to be completed. So if that, ha okay. sorry, if that happens, they would just need to come bring the, the changes to us and get preliminary approval again? Or you only get it once. You only get it once. It would mean there's a lot of work 
that typically, I don't know, I guess it depends on how comfortable the board feels, but typically you have the basics down in preliminary so that it's the details get worked out through final. So mm -hmm. if you're going back to the basics, mm -hmm. there could be a lot of work in mm -hmm. between those two, which isn't probably typical. Mm -hmm. Well, well consi considering the concern of all the abutters out there, shouldn't we maybe err on, you know, on the side of caution and get that done first before we go through this step here? That's your decision. <laughs> yeah. I think if Robin feels, I mean, if Robin feels that we need to, <laughs> if we need to, uh, that if we feel we need a peer review yeah. for the wetlands, mm -hmm. then we shouldn't do preliminary now. Well, why, why don't we do that? So you're going to withdraw and your motion? Yes. If we're going to. I, I withdraw my second. Okay. And we'll, so, okay. If we're going to do it, if we're going to, because it could move the lots, and if we give them preliminary, they could start putting roads in. Right. Sure. Yeah. Okay. All set. Do you have direction? Yes. <laughs> okay. I would suggest, as long as we're still in discussion, I usually miss the site walks, but based on the topography of this and the number of people that showed up, I think I would, I would, wouldn't mind. If Jamal scheduled a site walk, even if it was just me and Jamal, but because I've missed all the other ones. But no. Steve, do you think that the the applicant would be amenable to to site walk? Oh sure, yeah. We have the center line of the road staked out now, so it's not, okay. yeah. So I can work with you to coordinate that. <laughs> sure. And the board. Is, is it all wooded right now? The whole lot. It is. Is the is the okay. put on your tech juice? <laughs> We're used to it. Uh, just you're out of order, sir. We're trying to finish. If I could just ask one thing of Jamel, uh, do you know approximately how long the peer review would would take to get um, someone out there? I don't have an exact timing, but a couple um, weeks. We do have a, a third party yeah. Uh, yeah. organization that we work with and. Uh, Angela, do you have any predictions, or is it sort of vary? Um, it just, yeah, where we can fit into their schedule. So um, typically they're pretty quick within a week or two, okay. I would say, yeah, that's, to get into okay, the schedule. Okay, that's fine. Sure. And if you could provide the information from the vernal pool assessment analysis, because obviously that window has passed for the... Yeah, that was yeah. Assessment. It's part of the application. Great. That we yeah, it, yeah, it goes a lot quicker. Yeah, if we get the like the CAD file of the mm -hmm. wetland flagging and things like that, that they can just go out there with the GPS okay. and so. find their way around. Um, makes it a lot quicker, too. Sure. And the uh, habitat review, now is that going to, did you say before that's going to be triggered? I F and W will get a copy of the applications that we submit to the state. Um, I can't tell them to do any sort of level of review, but they'll, they will get that application and, and, and do with it what they think is appropriate. So what I have in my notes is that a peer review of wetlands has been requested prior to the resubmission of a preliminary plan. Does that reflect the? I think so. This right? Yeah. Almost word for word. <laughs> okay. Okay. Do you have any other questions for us? Nope. I'm good. Thanks. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Steve, I would just encourage you to continue to work with staff um, to make progress on this because I know that you had said that you wanted to ask for a little bit of direction on what to do behind the lot 6 through 12. So we have very good faith and trust with the staff. So Yeah, definitely. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot. Okay, due to the time, if it's... That was the last one. Right? That was the last one. We got staff report next. Well, I, I was just going to say, if, uh, if it's um, agreeable with the board, can we just um, bypass 17 through 20, or do you do you have something you need to say? I can have a very quick staff report. Okay. Please. All right. So we're still collecting comments on the comprehensive <laughs> plan draft through the end of September. So the what? public. And board members, please. Please. folks, we're still in session. Please move along. Board and the public, 
are encouraged to provide comments on the comprehensive plan draft. Um, the planning department did um, did hire a new administrative assistant uh, to replace Karen Patterson. Her name's Doreen Priest, and she'll be starting on September 17th. December. September 17th. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so she may be at the next meeting. Uh, we're not sure yet. What's your name again? <laughs> Doreen Priest. Who was it now? What are they doing? I missed that. I don't have <laughs> Maybe we should just <laughs> continue another time. What's happening? Uh, the planning department has hired a, an administrative assistant to replace Karen Patterson. And oh. She, and she starts on September <laughs> 17th. All right. It's 11.10 p.m., just for the record. You can speak into the microphone. Well, I can't drink it. I'm only getting That's all I have. Okay. That's it. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Okay. Third. Did Any you discussion? want to respect? I like how we are unanimously, unanimously, unanimously seconded that last one. Yeah. Okay. <laughs>